quorum, but I think we can get going with some of the basic things that we can perhaps, uh, that we don't need a quorum on. And just, uh... Okay, there's six of us here, so there's no use taking a, uh, a roll call because uh, we don't have a quorum. But I think we can... Um, um, I guess we, we can approve summary minutes. No. No. Is there anything we can do? Uh, do you want to start with the Pledge of Allegiance? I think we can do well, that. Well, I mean, the Pledge of Allegiance. Sure. Is there anything we can do besides the Pledge of Allegiance? Citizens' comments. Citizens comments. You could go ahead with that. Chair, I propose that we take any uh, citizens' uh, comments uh, out of turn and dispose of those in the essence of time. All right. That's not very wise. So, nice. All right. Gus, would you lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the uh, regular board meeting for Tuesday, September 23rd. And uh, we don't have a quorum at this time, but uh, I'm going to take the privilege of uh, the chair and, um, and and restructure and restructure the, uh, the agenda. And at this time, um, I think we have two citizens' comments that were requested. So, is there anybody present here that wishes to address? I think. Mr. Carlos Garcia. Uh, Carlos Garcia here. He's here. Mr. Garcia. Good afternoon. Carlos Garcia with the local grassroots group, Rollback Tolls. Um, I'd like to address the board today. Do, do we need his address for the record, Pam? Um, I believe that. Would you state it for the record? Then? Address 12762 Southwest 116th Terrace. Thank you. And. Um, I'd like to speak to the board in regards to the uh, recently completed or ongoing uh, landscaping project on the 874 expressway, uh, which I travel um, quite a bit. Okay, and, excuse, me, uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. Mr. Chair, what, um, what is the uh, protocol with respect to the minutes allowed? He has three minutes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Speaker has three minutes. Uh, All right. All right. Thank you. Three minutes. Um, the the landscaping that's uh, recently recently been planted in the um, in the 874, um, though it looks very nice, no one can doubt that it looks very nice. Thank you. My group and a lot of people that we've spoken to are concerned about the cost. When I requested a copy of the of of what the budget was and the allocated monies for that landscaping. Um, some people were actually quite shocked, especially at the Kendall uh, Federation of Homeowners, to find out that so far over $3 million has been spent on landscaping on the 874, including almost $8,000 a piece for 56 Majul non-native palm trees, um, which are very nice, but, you know, toll payers are asking themselves, should we be paying for $8,000 palm trees? And a lot of people have actually come to us with that, and they go, my God, look at all this landscaping. I mean, that's got to cost a mint. And I've been talking with several landscaping people, and, and it is very expensive. And we were quite shocked to find out that it's over, slightly over $3 million in landscaping so far. Um, we're concerned about the, the cost and how MDX is, is really looking, or not considering, we believe, the toll payer when it comes to expenses, expenditures like this during a down economy, people are trying to hold on to their jobs, their houses, feed their kids, and here comes MDX planting, you know, $3 million worth of palm trees uh, and, and landscaping, on top of which the landscaping is so bunched together that I don't know if anybody's been out there lately, it's like every possible foot of of, of space has been used to plant a palm, a tree, a bush, or something. 
It's excessive. I have traveled extensively around the state, and I can honestly say there's no highway with, it, with as many trees as 874 in Kendall. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of talk about um, things that the, the board wants to do with customer reward programs and things like that. And, you know, where's the sense of it? I, that's that's what, what my group wants to know and some of the uh, residents in Kendall. It looks very nice, but it's, it's excessive, and we feel that it's also um, a possible liability when you have over 50-foot trees in the median of a busy highway if we were to get a, even a Category 1 storm that could cause a very big liability in the travel lanes um, uh, for such an important artery if we should have a hurricane that would need to, uh, to be cleared quickly. But that's, that's my, um, my comments. Uh, we've looked at the state guidelines and recommendations that, you know, for most projects. It's a 1.5 recommended, re recommended budget for landscaping. Uh, by our calculations, this is slightly over 4% on 874, taking into the cost of the recent expansion. We believe it's excessive, and uh, okay. we'd like the, the board to address that and, and, and maybe speak to well, that. Thank you very much, Mr. Garcia, for your presentation. And perhaps we can get a, a, an answer yes. uh, to your points yes, from the and executive director. And Director Lurie Gottles has the details, but uh, Mr. Garcia is correct. If you look at the 874 project from Killian to the Turnpike, it is about 4% for landscaping. And um, yes, there is a 1.5% legislative, legislative uh, uh, rule on, uh, on landscaping for work programs, and that is it applies to the Florida Department of Transportation. We've chosen to follow that. If you look at the, the total construction that was set for all of 874 from the Palmetto, to the turnpike. We're investing over $220 million. When you look at all the opportunities for landscaping, we're going to be above the 1.5, but if you look at the entire work program, the five-year work program, we are at 1.5 percent because there's many roadways that there's simply no opportunity to do landscaping. And that's um, yeah. well, and I, we've responded like I, that. I, I, I think, I think there, there are two issues that Mr. Garcia has brought up. One is the cost. Yes. And the issue is should MBX be spending um, three million dollars to landscape a uh, and landscape lusciously uh, a road, and does that fit within the norm, and is that something that's prudent? And the second issue that he brought up is the question of safety, which is what happens if one of those very big palms falls into the road during a hurricane? If one of those big palms falls during a hurricane, first of all, if there's a hurricane, category one or even tropical storm winds, nobody should be driving. So if it does fall, we would have to make sure it gets moved out of the highway. That is taken into account when we plant these, these uh, facilities. Number two, as far as cost, this uh, contract was, proc was competitively procured. There was multiple bidders. Uh, the price for the, f for the material was competitively procured, so I, that's the answer for that. All right. Any uh, questions uh, from any yeah, members? Right. Mr. Wartman. Okay. Um, a couple of things. Uh, when MDX was created uh, and when uh, Miami-Dade County was pushing for a lot of local, how do you say, uh, input, one of the things was, I remember, landscaping. And uh, one of the things was pushed is to have more than the state mandated minimums in response to the people living in and around the areas and also on the roadways as traffic calming. Okay, and uh, I think we've responded with a, a criteria book, I believe it's 11 by 17, that gives uh, design characteristics uh, and also uh, landscaping characteristics, what we should do. And uh, understanding what our executive director has said is that and I remember during the ongoing procurement of the various things, there were certain opportunities where prices were lower and we were able to get more. Alfred, that is correct. We were able to get, because of what happened in the economy, some opportunities. And if, uh, Mr. Director, if I'm correct, that what you're saying is we followed the 1.5% general guidelines, but other parts of the roadways, it's wall-to-wall -wall asphalt, there's no room. Yeah, and you correct. basically concentrated in the areas where there was places. So in that particular area, there's more to make up for the areas where it's less. 
Right. And definitely, we have areas that, do, that there's no, we can't landscape because it's just asphalt, con asphalt, 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 concrete barrier walls. And the other thing, if I'm correct, uh, I remember Alfred, you brought this up, is that instead of the smaller trees, where you're traveling along an expressway at speed versus an arterial street, 30 miles an hour or less, that we should be aiming more toward taller ones. People see at a distance, more visual impact, less uh, less vegetation, but more large pieces. Um, you could chime in any time on that, uh, you know, versus a lot of small stuff and the amount of maintenance that they take is a little different too. That is correct, Mr. Wardman, and we've also worked with our landscape architects to talk about grouping of trees, which Mr. Garcia mentioned, related to that those trees when they're when they're more mature in their in their environment they they're grouped so that they don't fall during storms because landscape grouping which I didn't know I'm not a landscape architect that's part of the design that went into the highway uh, when it relates well, to are the there any other point. questions or comments at the, at I, I just Mr. Chair if I can I mean Carlos let me ask you something because our, the trees are already in mm -hmm. right so we can't you know, take them out but you know what might be helpful is if you have some ideas in the future, we are going to continue doing projects. Actually, I do, and I forget yeah. to mention it. Yeah, if, if you have Can some I? ideas, maybe you submit okay. them, and maybe either you could discuss on how you or your group would think maybe we should landscape it in the future. Well, okay, that's a very good idea. You know, you totally reminded me of a point that I forgot to bring up. Thank you. Um, one idea that, that we have is that, uh, you know, highways need landscaping, but I know that it's been talked about uh, here at, at the meetings about um, non toll revenue. One idea might be to get uh, corporations to sponsor the, land sh the landscaping. Mr. Say Mr. Geico sponsor we're the landscaping. We're pursuing that. That, you is, know, that uh, is a, I think, I think it's a That's a very valuable recommendation. Yeah. yeah. And I, think, uh, I think in the future, what we ought to do, especially during these difficult times, is, is have a set aside a specific time before we go expend that money to see if we can get corporate sponsorship of it. Yeah. I think that's a very good recommendation. Thank you. Well, well, one yes. other quick uh, observation, according to that guideline though, that says the 1.5, it also recommends that native plants be used, and those medjools are not native. They're, for, they're North African desert palms, and I've oh. spoken to several uh, arborists that, that have concerns that they might get what's called uh, uh, wet um, a wet foot or, or a wet rod or something like that, where too much water accumulates at the bottom and weakens it, and it could fall over. All right, we'll we'll look into that and we'll, we'll report back to you on that on that specific question. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. All right. Is there anybody else that wants to speak in the in the public hearing portion? I think there was another. Uh, is there anybody else that wishes? Mr. Eugene Ochoa, I believe, requested to Mr. speak. Mr. Ochoa, please step forward. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Um, we're here to speak on behalf of the um, DMS uh, project, but I, we wanted to speak to the full board or in, in front All of the right. full board. So then, so then let's, 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 let's do this, uh, um, Mr. Mr. Ochoa. What we're going to do is uh, you're gonna, you want to speak to what, in effect, is item uh, 9B. That is that is correct. Yeah, I am going to allow a, even though that's not within the the spectrum of what's usually done, I'm going to allow discussion on the part of the participants because if I allow you to speak, then I have to allow the others to speak, and I'm sure they're all going to want to speak. So we're going to Absolutely. do that, and what we're going to do so that you'll have a full board or as full as we can get <clears throat> today, we're going to defer that to be the last item. Okay? So yeah, that's take fine. your seats and we'll sure. just... We, Go ahead through, through the chair. I, I, we do have a quorum now. I, I'm going I'm to ask for a for a, for a, a, uh, a roll call, please, uh, Maria Luisa. Uh, you, you can take your seats. Right. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Fernandez Guzman, Ms. Gutierrez here. Mr. Evia, Mr. Holland. Mr. Lasarte? Here. Mr. Malouf? Here. Mr. Martinez? I know he was here. Mr. Martinez yeah. is here. Mr. Pedro? Well, he is here. He is here. He is here. I think he's in the back. Mr. Sanabria? Ms. Solar McKinley? Mr. Wartman? Here. Vice Chair Fano? Here. Chair Ferret? Here. So we have a quorum. And Mr. Chairman, uh, the Treasurer just sent me a note that he'll be here in five minutes. Okay. Um, the. Um, 
have a quorum. Declaration of voting conflicts. Are there any declarations of voting conflicts to be noted? Mr. Chairman, I have a conflict. I have a conflict in item uh, nine. Uh, item, yeah, nine uh, B. Nine B. Yeah. All right. Let the record reflect that uh, Mr. Lasarda has a conflict on nine B and will be recusing himself. Anything, anybody else at this time? All right. Then um, we've been through the citizens' comments, so we now are in item two, which is the approval of the summary minutes. There's a motion to approve the board meeting of June 26, and it's been seconded. Is there further discussion on this item? All those in favor of the approval say aye. Aye. Opposed? Now we need an approval for special board meeting of August the 7th. I'll make that motion. It's been moved. Is there, is there a second? Second. Second. Is there further discussion on the issue? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So both of these uh, summary minutes are approved. Uh, Executive Director's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and board members. And before I start, um, you, know, you know what, Javier? Uh, that's because several people have called that they're on their way. They're minutes away. So let's wait. Um, okay. Can, can we go to the General Counsel's report and the um, MPO? Yes, uh, ma'am. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in keeping with the um, past meetings where I have done the um, ethics brief that we're doing that in incrementally rather than bringing everybody in for, for an hour's ethics training, um, I just want to take a few minutes and uh, the topic that I wanted to discuss today, and, and, and oftentimes a lot of these things we say, oh, these really go without saying, but it's an opportunity for us to sort of rethink and recommit about some things that we all inherently know are very important to how this organization is run and, and very integral to how we do our business. And with that in mind, I wanted to talk very briefly about the concept of uh, fiduciary duty and the fiduciary duty that members of boards of directors have. And I know many of you currently or in the past have sat on other boards and probably have had this explained to you, so I'm just going to go over it fairly quickly. Um, First, the term fiduciary comes from the Latin term meaning trust. And so obviously it involves a relationship where there is a higher degree of trust and responsibility between parties. Uh, that has to do with the fact that a fiduciary has greater knowledge uh, and stands in a relationship to somebody where that's more than just a stranger or a casual relationship. Uh, for example, various people, such as myself as an attorney, has a fiduciary responsibility to their client, as do certified public accountants, financial advisors, or personal guardians, because they have a specialized knowledge and they are providing uh, advice and have a special position in relation to the individuals that they provide advice to. Uh, that heightened responsibility is also something that boards of directors have. Um, we've talked in the past about Chapter 112 Florida statutes that generally is what guides the members of this board in terms of your ethical responsibilities. But in addition to that, uh, there is the, in essence, common law fiduciary responsibility that boards of directors have. And I'm very much a person that believes not only in learning from your own mistakes from those, but those of other persons. And one of the things that made me think that this is a good concept to talk about real briefly was when I was reading the July 12, uh, 2012 report uh, by Free Sporkin and Sullivan that was made to the Board of Directors of Penn State University. Uh, when the university was in the very unenviable position of having a very tragic situation, they had to bring in outside persons to help them evaluate what controls they needed to have in place uh, and how they really got into a very difficult situation that they were in. And a number of the comments that I'm going to make today come, I'm borrowing liberally from that report about how they talk about that board of directors. Um, one of the points that the report made was that the um, university directors really have a responsibility to have a system of controls in place uh, where they have a systemic and sustain, in sustained fashion in getting reports and use that information to then probe and inquire. And if they fail to do that, they may in fact breach their fiduciary duty. 
And in fact, that's what uh, the free report found happened in that case, that the board really failed to ask very probing questions when they were made aware that there was a serious issue out there. Um, one of the things that I want to be sure that you all take away from this is that MDX has put into place a very good system of policies, um, standing committees that report to the full board and advise and make recommendations to the full board, and provide this body with the information that you need to, to make responsible decisions. Um, it's important that staff provide complete, thorough recommendations and information to this board so that you can act. And in, co in consequence, we also rely on you making very probing questions to us. We use those questions that you ask us on one issue as we prepare to bring new issues before you. Usually they're substantive in nat nature, but oftentimes, I know when I look at things, I, I question whether they're legible so that they can provide information that you can actually use because sometimes it's either too small or too blurry for you to even make um, a reasonable use of the document that we provide you. So we listen to that and, and we use that when we do bring things before you. So in conclusion, I, I just want to remind everybody that, um, and, and I think you also have in your packets um, what our auditors uh, have uh, provided to each of you to provide related party disclosures. So it, it just is a very timely topic for you to remember that you do have very special responsibility and uh, we do very much welcome when you do put us through the, cru the crucible of asking us tough questions because it helps us then better provide information to you in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> is there anything else uh, that you wish to report to us? Pam? That, that's it. That's all. Okay. All right. Um, the MPO representative report. I'm happy to report, uh, Mr. Chair, that there's nothing to report because our meeting is scheduled for Thursday, and we've been on a total hiatus all summer long. So next month I will have lots to say. Thank you very much. I, I just want to make a comment to you. I, at the uh, last week's Border Transportation Commission meeting, I would say the hottest subject and the most discussed subject were the, the MPO. MPOs. So I'm sure that uh, uh, this governor and uh, this uh, secretary of transportation and others will have a lot to say on MPOs, even though that's a federal law. But I think there's, there's a lot to come. I understand that. And the worry that all of Miami-Dade should have with this is that although consolidation sounds like a good thing, sounds like efficiency and saving for Miami-Dade, it would be a catastrophe because it would mean less for us, more for Broward and beyond. So that's the only thing that I'm really concerned. But I'm pretty sure that um, the board members, the elected officials, will address that. No. Um, can we do the committee reports? Is there we, no, we, we typically waive them in the, the is agenda there a, items. Is there a motion to waive the committee reports? I move to waive the... This is A and B, second. right? Can we do that together? Yes, no, second. There's a motion right. to waive. Is, there's a second. Is there further discussion on the waiver? All those in favor say aye. 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 Then we have the consent agenda, which is item 8A, travel approval. Um, I understand, Mr. Maloof, that you have an interest in that you're going to be going to that uh, Daytona Beach uh, Executive uh, uh, Transportation Association, the FPTA meeting. I do have an interest, Mr. Chair. Yes. No. And I understand, Javier, you're going to go. Uh, I am going to be at the FTC meeting, and I'm going to try to fly back in time for that. Um, but if I do not, then if anybody has an interest in going, and I think we ought to do it in... Um, uh, we ought to do it so that those who did not go to the IBTTA meeting and would like to have an opportunity to be involved in transportation issues should have preference uh, for that slot, and, and if not, uh, then anybody else who wishes to go. Um, do we need to prove that? It's a consent agenda. Yeah. Oh, so we do I'll make that okay, motion. so there's a... 
So is there a motion on item 8A? The consent second it moved. Moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Maloof is hogging up all the meetings. Okay, so I guess you're up. All right, so I'll do the, the report. By the way, you didn't get an additional audience. All right, so, so, so I'll tell you what. Hold off, and I think we can do... Um, Items um, on nine and go let's through. Keep going. Eight, let's keep going. A, we C, might finish D. before they before anybody else shows it's up. Here, right? uh, so then, uh, at this time, I would take up the regular agenda, and we'll take up item nine A. Pam. Um, nine, item 9A, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Lurigatos to uh, inform the board on this matter. Um, it has to do with uh, environmental permitting that would be handled by the Miami-Dade uh, County in, in conjunction with uh, other co-permittees. This was endorsed by the operating committee, so go ahead, Albert. This is Mr. Chair, board members. This is a motion to approve. The delegation of authority for the executive director to enter into an interlocal agreement with Miami-Dade County to perform professional services on behalf of MDX as one of the co-permittees named in the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES, permit number FLS 00003-003. This was endorsed by the Operations Committee on September 18th. And this is, in essence, since MDX, as, a, as an entity, has five expressways that discharge storm water runoff, into uh, natural bodies of water in the county, we basically have to abide by this, uh, this pollutant, pollutant discharge elimination system. These act the activities are described in the, in, the, uh, in the packet, but I'd just like to briefly go over them. The first activity is water monitoring, and that's basically how we do sampling of all the water that gets discharged into each stormwater basin. Activity two is best management practices. This is a new annual activity as required by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection to be compliant with EPA reporting requirements. This is uh, basically debris sampling due to street sweeping, and this is a, one of the new requirements as we are an entity that does street sweeping. Uh, the third activity is Basin Management Action Plan, and this is also a new activity required to be compliant. This is done once every five years in the reporting cycle. The, and this basically, uh, it monitors total maximum daily loads of pollutants being discharged into environmentally impaired drainage basins, some of which we do discharge into. These fiscal, the f fiscal impact of each one, the first activity is a, it, typically we, are, we budget in the operating every year of, a, of a approximately $26,498 to do the activity. The second activity is also budgeted annually not to exceed $2,316. The third activity is a one-time charge of every five years of $77,392. The total fiscal impact over five years is in the amount of $221,462, but part of it, as I mentioned, is budgeted on an annual basis. Since this, since this agreement was brought up after our cycle of budgeting, uh, we have worked it out with the county that we don't have to pay into the program until next operating budget year, which we will bring to you next uh, next calendar year. Uh, we have, uh, as part of the operations committee, brought up by board member Gutierrez, we are also going to do a quick analysis on what it would cost us to do this analysis on our own and not pay into an interlocal with the county. So we're also looking into that uh, for something that would... Uh, for next year. Well, uh, you we'll know, bring I, that back. I, I noticed that uh, every city in the county is involved, as is F. Dodd District 6, the Turnpike Enterprise, and unincorporated Miami-Dade County. That is correct. And, and there are two cities that I'm aware of that are, that are not. And that's the city of Hialeah and city of Miami do their own studies and reporting. Okay. And, and we'll be working with them to get some information from them. Uh, but good. as you mentioned, DOT, Turnpike, and other entities do follow this type of agreement. Okay. Sir, so are there any questions or any comments? And that is your motion on this item. Motion. Oh. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item 9A <clears throat> passes. Now we're in Mr. item Chairman, AC. Mr. Chairman, if I have a conflict on B. Could we do C and D? That's and what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Oh, we could do C yes. and D? Perfect. Yeah, that's what we're doing. 
We're, we're now on item A, uh, 9C. Okay. Approval to accept the GEC recommendation of capital assets disposal. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, this item was presented to the Budget and Finance Committee on uh, September 20th. And uh, I think that uh, John Becker with HNTB presented there, and he would be able to answer any questions you have on this matter. Are there any questions uh, on, this issue? on this issue? I have no questions, and I'll move it at the appropriate time. I had a question, Mr. Chair. Right, yeah, just first. for the record, because it sounds like we're disposing of assets, and it's intangible assets. It sounds like something that enormous. Is. Enormous. Can we be specific on what is being the disposal? It's a paper. For, for the record, John. For the record. Well, in, in, the, in the term, the disposal of assets, that's an accounting term. And, right. And so, um, you know, me being an engineer, but that's that's the terminology that's used. I understand, used and, but it, this is not for me. This is for everybody else that's listening. I understand exactly what that is because mm -hmm. I know about accounting. Just, just explain very briefly what it is, John, for the and, record. And these are basically studies that, that do not end up you know, coming into a capitalized project, or there's studies that, in in the case of, of one of them, several projects did spin out of it, but some of the work did not move forward into a project, and that data. Uh, so we're following accounting to, procedures that is required of us, and this is a standard operating procedure type of a thing. That's right? correct. These and we're not disposing costs. of any assets to the public or anybody else. This is just changing the category of the accounting, right? Yes. And also, if it's a non-capitalized cost, something that is operational like this, uh, that it is uh, written off, if that's the correct term to use. Are there any questions? Oh, well, more of a statement. I remember at the subcommittee, Budget and Finance, uh, one of the things was, uh, as uh, Mr. Gutierrez said, there's not a, most of this is not physical. We have, like, a fence, like one thing. Yeah. Other than that, 90% uh, of it is more accounting correct. Well, that's what he just said. Okay. They're so I'm tangles. saying that in the future, at the subcommittee, it came forward that we'd like to see it be physically separate, highlight. You still have to follow the general accounting principles and all that, but some way in their statement or separating the two parts clearly so the average person knows what's their you know, accounting correction and basically disposal of real physical assets. Well, that's, that's part of the motion then, okay? <laughs> well, that's stipulation. Is there a further discussion? Is there a motion? There's a motion. I'll move it. Second. Second with the stipulation that Mr. Wartman uh, put in. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So C passes. We're now on item D. Item D is approval to extend the current underwriting team uh, contract, and I'll let Ms. Schaefer take this matter. Thank you, Pam. In 2009, the authority procured an underwriting team for the purpose of having a, a, an underwriting syndicate available for a negotiated deal. Um, we selected a senior manager, uh, two co-senior managers, as well as five co-managers from the poll. Um, the Procurement was for the purpose of um, performing Series 2010 for a period of two years from the date of issuance. Um, so the underwriting team has expired as of August of 2012. So we are requesting that the underwriting team um, be extended and to be utilized in the event that the authority has a refunding opportunity. Um, extended for what period of time? The recommendation from the Budget and Finance Committee was for a period of six months. Okay. Under discussion. Anybody want to? I have a question. Please. Given that Here. we're so diligent about making sure that contracts don't expire without us re-procuring and having ample time in procuring, why do we let this lapse? And why are we behind the eighth ball instead of being in front of the eighth? Or did I misunderstand no, what's happening it did here? Lapse. Normally, we usually do a three-year contract with two-year extensions, and that was my understanding, Mr. Gutierrez, that it was a three-year contract with a two-year extension. Um, at the time we went out for procurement in 2009, which was really kind of the height of the banking crisis, um, I made a decision to do it for two years, and again, unfortunately, it was an oversight on my part. I didn't realize it was two years rather than three years with two-year extensions. But in other words, the contract was for two years, is that the correct? The contract was two years from the date of the most the last issuance. And that expired when? It expired August of 2012. Okay. 
Mr. Chair, a follow-up question to that. Do we see a need in the very near future, in the next six months, that we are going out to do anything with this company? There you is never know. The, the answer is you yes. never know. No, no. The, the, is there a plan Oh, that's, different. Motion, that's a different question. Is there a plan in motion that we know that we've been contemplating, that we've been discussing, that we are going to go out to the market? Because that's where I see a problem. I see it as, come on, these are numbers and we're not dealing with blinders. We knew, we've been activated on, we've been talking about it because I read the committee reports, so I know that this is the discussion has been there, and I really don't understand why this has happened. So my concern is, are we activating, are we pushing on something, and, and do you see it happening anytime immediately? There is an opportunity to do a refunding, but if certain events do not occur, we will not do the refunding. Well, there is an opportunity to do a refunding within the next six months. Correct. I mean, the market conditions are conducive for us to do a refunding, but if certain events don't occur um, within the organization, um, then we will not do the refunding. All right. Let, let me ask you this. If you were to go out, if this, if this board were to instruct you to advertise, uh, how long would it take for you to get to advertise and for us to bring it back to the proper committee and to the board? Um, four to five months. Okay. So <clears throat> you want to make it for four or five months instead of six I, months? I, I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, at, at the Finance Committee, we had discussed that because originally the proposal from staff was to extend it for another year. Right. And I said, you know, again, I had the same concern you had, which is why did this thing come up? And then the what, what we said is, look, immediately procure it. And I had suggested extend it month to month in case there was an emergency. Um, I, but, I, I think that but, that's a very thoughtful but, approach, but, but you but, need an expedited procurement. But, but, but at the committee, at the committee, you know, um, I think Mr. Rukman suggested that we do it for six months, and you know, the, the motion went that way with six months. You know, if the thing is this, you know, this is a, it's a, this is a highly competitive uh, field, and 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 what I wanted is I want to make sure that it looks like if we're giving everybody an equal playing field, right, and, and transparency, and, and, and unfortunately. Uh, let's, you know, we may have something in the next four or five months, and then we're going to extend this for six months. It just looks like, you know, maybe, you know, it just doesn't look all that clear from from a, from a, somebody looking from the outside. Budget. Well, this, this matter went through Budget and Finance Committee. The Budget and Finance Committee did send us a recommendation. That's what's before you. So Ms. Gutierrez rightfully is questioning it, and... Uh, uh, are there, do you have any further follow-up no, Just questions? a comment, uh, follow-up to Mr. Lassard. It, it's not going to look any worse than exactly what it is. You know, this happened, it expired last month in August. It's being dealt with this month, a month later. And you're going in and you're extending beyond the contract term. And it is what it is. When it happens with another consultant, another contractor, then we need to understand there's been a president that's been set. That's what, you know, I'm bringing about. And, you know, for someone that is so detailed and something that is so important, uh, I think we missed the bust on this. Mr. Chair. Mr. Maloof. Uh, Ms. Gutierrez, I mean, we were, although I wasn't on the committee, I was present at the meeting. Sat through the meeting because I like to kind of keep up with what the other committees are doing. I mean, and the discussion came back and forth with respect to whether there would be any downside to fast-tracking the procurement. And they talked about first extending it on a month-to-month. -month. That didn't seem practical, but then it came back to fast-tracking the procurement to a 90-day procurement, which was still on the table. Is if, you know, the staff at the time did not express any anxiety and there was no downside to to uh, fast-tracking the procurement while while our finance department goes through the either right refinancing of the package or reworking what's on the table. If the if it's appropriate, you know, I would approve the I would approve what's on our agenda today. I'll, I have a motion to approve with the uh, caveat that we consider fast-tracking the new procurement 
on a 90-day, okay. three-month track. Before, before I accept your motion, the chairman of the committee just uh, walked in, and I would defer to him. Thank you, and I apologize for being That's late. All right. tell, tell us what, what, what you believe we should do on this. Uh, the committee discussed it at length, and we decided to grant a six-month extension, during which time we would uh, request a new team. And that's, that's it. That's basically it. See, see what, what Ms. Gutierrez uh, uh, has brought up is that by doing this, well, number one, we set a precedent. I agree. I mean, we, 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 and, and, I was ready to and, cancel that period. And, and, I mean, and, and, and number two, and number two if, if something does happen, Marie, in the next three or four months where you say, we got to go because we're not going to have another opportunity like this and we refinance, then it, you know, it could be subject to, to somebody saying, well, you guys knew this all along and this was a, you know, and it would just not reflect well on us. But, Mr. Chen, so, so I understand. we did know it all along, and I'm not saying we as I or most of us, but staff did know it all along. And in reality, you know, I, I really, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to steal these words from a good friend that used to sit on this board. This does not pass the smell test. Yeah. See, and that's, and that's the problem. Frank. And that's the problem. Mr. Chairman, I, 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 I'm very happy with a 90-day extension if that's the case. And by that time, I believe that... I don't think we can do it in 90 days because uh, she said it would take four to five months. So I think we have to be realistic. Well, not really. I think we can well, push Well, but that's, that's not your decision or mine. Well, I think I, we talked to Helen about it. She said that possibly in 90 days it could be done. Helen. <clears throat> I didn't say that, the but chair, the chair we can make asked it happen as soon as possible, but I cannot commit to this board that three months would be sufficient, given so, that we have so to... what can you commit to do... Um, Best case scenario, four months. Four months. Assuming so, that every, all the would, stars would you align. Four I, through the chair, I have a question. Wait, 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 because he still has the floor. Sir, I, I, would, uh, I would just hold back and listen to uh, the sentiment of all my colleagues, but as far as I'm concerned, you can cancel this today, as far as I'm concerned. I'm going along with the opinions expressed in my committee, which was trying to find a, a compromise, but... I, you know, I can go you, anyway, but nothing past six months, and my preference is three months. I hear four months, so I don't know. If, go ahead. Through, through the chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I just want to thank you for your courtesy and, 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 and deference to my, my colleague, uh, Ms. Gutierrez, and the rest of the board members, and being present at the meeting. I don't want there to be confusion as to what my motion is. We understand that our financial professionals are telling us four to five months in order to refinance a deal that may need to be done. I don't have a problem so much as the extension, but... but no, that's, not what, that's not what we said. No, no. It's well, to, no, no. It's, to, staff, to, get a new team on, it's a, to get a new team procurement pr process. Are you talking? That's what you're talking yes. about. Yeah. No, it's not... It's not it's the, the, no, let me, tell you, let me tell you how I recall the conversation. I recall the conversation being that it would take, in order to, to uh, rework a deal that needed to be refinanced, I thought they said it would take four to five months. You can do a procurement, we, you can do a procurement in 30 days. You can fast track a procurement based on your own time frame because you dictate the business rules to determine what the outcome is. What I'm saying is, Give staff enough time to do refinance any package they want, and the, but in the meantime, fast track a procurement, a 90-day <laughs> procurement. I'm, one second, one, yeah. fast track a 90-day pr procurement cycle, which I think even the smallest agencies anywhere in the country can accomplish a three-month procurement. Okay. So in essence, what you're doing is you're getting what you want to finance the package, but you're also at the same time you have a procurement in play so that when you finalize any financing that you may or may not do, you're already queued up with a new group of companies to finalize the selection. That was my, that was the, the approach that I thought was worth discussion by the, 
All right. All right. Uh, Javier wants to make, uh, the executive director wants to make a, a statement, and then Mr. Wartman, and then Mr. Lasser. Mr. Chairman and, and, and board members, I think we're, we're mixing two issues together. One is an extension of a contract for a defined period of time while we re-procure another contract. And the other one is the assumption that by extending that contract, we're immediately refinancing a deal. We're not. The issue of refinancing and the opportunity to refinance has been there for over a year and a half. We've looked at the market. We've been trying to time it when it's right, when it's appropriate. As Ms. Schaefer said, unless certain things happen, no refinancing may occur during this period of time. What we're doing is we're covering all the aspects. By extending this contract, we keep two options on the table. We procure a contract for a new team, but if there's an opportunity for refinancing, you're not obligated to a competitive deal. You can do a negotiated deal, too, and the board has those opportunities to discuss. If we don't have the existing team on and we don't have a new team on, then if that opportunity or that requirement to refinance comes up, and I'm going to look at all my finance people because now I'm speaking financial terms, then we'd be obligated to only do a competitive deal. And then you wouldn't have that opportunity to weigh out what is a better way to go. That does not mean that by extending this contract six, six months, we are committing to the existing team that we're going to do the refinance. There are certain conditions that have to be correct. All right, Mr. Wartman. I'd like to... A oh, say friendly amendment that, that fair, may fair, be fair. acceptable. It's a little different. I'd say, oh, you did six months. Okay, but how about if it's six months or until a new contract is in place, whichever comes first, also realizing that the new team may be the old team if they do right. that again. That's not, that's so, not an issue. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. I just let, him, uh, let him finish. Okay. Basically looking to have it, instead of just saying the blanket six months, just say six months or until a new contract is procured. The, my recommend, first of all, there are two different processes, as the executive director eloquently clarified. The, my motion was it, was, it was for the sake of collegiality and a courtesy to the chair of the Budget and Finance Committee, because the recommendation that came out of his committee was the six-month extension. I didn't disrupt that because our financial team, the professional financial team, uh, has some ideas as to what they might be able to do or what they are thinking about doing. That may, may or may not occur. That's over here. What I'm saying is while that's happening or not going to happen, it's not disrupting that contract, over here this board is directing staff to put a procurement on the street okay. and, a, and within a 90-day cycle so that everything is in queue, they, they, they move in tandem, and the board gets what they want, and staff is not disrupted. All right. My, uh, Mr. Lacerda, you're next, and then, and then uh, uh, that's all you're next. Now, I'll, I'll leave my comments. I'll hear the rest of my, my colleagues. Well, uh, I, I want to tell you again, i got to tell you my own personal feelings is a cancel now because that's the way I feel. I don't feel that precedent should be set in this case. I don't think that put us in any kind of financial peril of not uh, living up to any expectations short term. If we have a four-month um, procurement in which we get um, the new players, the new players are going to be the same. It's basically shuffling the same. It's all basically the same players. It's just shuffle because there's only so many people that can underwrite so many bonds in this country. It's a number of four or five of them. So we're probably going to get a, a, a rehash of the same. But from the president, the principal, I think that we got to keep him on the short leash. I think six months is too much. I really do. But I went along with what the committee thought without trying to uh, put in my own personal feelings about it. So that's, that's, But I'm expressing those here okay. before you. Gus, yeah. then Shelley, and then Lewis. Thank you, Chairman. I just really have an administrative question. Um, can, can we extend an expired contract? Any time that you have an agreement that both parties agree to modify it, you can. Okay. May, may I say, we don't actually have a contract with the underwriting team. 
They are a selected team for us to utilize when we do bond deals, but the contract actually happens once a deal is put in place. So there's not an actual signed contract with each of these um, team Correct. members, number one. And number two, because I want to make sure that the record is clear, we didn't anticipate needing a bond issuance or going to the market until after ORT implementation in 2014. So it wasn't quite an oversight that the contract expired. It's just that there's so many moving parts right now going on with it internally okay. that we don't want to miss out Th on this Thank you for bond. clarifying that. That's very important. We, you got that right. There's a lot of moving parts. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Shelley, you were you All right. So we're not compensating them either. Now I'm confused. There is no contract and it's expired? There is a selection of an underwriting team that when the solicitation document was put in place, it said that we were going to utilize this team for the 2010 bond um, issuance and for two years after that which, um, as needed. We haven't needed them since and we weren't anticipating to reuse this team or to go to the market again until after the ORT implementation in 2014. So there's no compensation to this team either unless we go to the market. You, I have a question for both of you. Marie, my question, what's the downside on going on a month-to-month -month contract so we're not exposed without consultants? It's really, a, it's really a planning process. Certain things have to happen within the organization for us to even trigger and say we would like to do refunding. Market conditions, just, you know, you look at, you say, I want to refinance my mortgage, right? Well, we say, okay, financially we're able to do so, but we have to do some planning in that process. The authority has to take certain, make certain decisions for us to trigger to do a traffic and revenue study, to update the work program, to do cost estimates on our projects and so forth. That usually takes anywhere from 90 days to 120 days just to do the planning of it to get to market. So if we go down this path to say we're going to do this planning, we're going to incur cost um, in the event we end up not doing overfunding. So in order to keep the team intact to say, you know, we, we're going to spend this money to do planning, we're going to pull the trigger at the end of the six months. So the downside is we're going to incur cost. Okay, thank you. What? And Helen, I'm what? sorry. What plans are on the drawing board for the procurement today? Pursuant to the direction of the Budget and Finance Committee uh, at the meeting last week, they directed us to go ahead and put out a, re a new request for qualifications for a new team. But in the meantime, we will remain this team, we will keep this team on board available to us in case we do need to go to market for the refinancing. Thank you. Mr. Martinez. A lot of my Thank you, Mr. Chair. A lot of my questions have been answered and some of the answers have created more questions. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, Marie, the position of staff is that the shortest amount of time to keep some sort of continuity in this entire thing would be a six-month extension. Is that right. correct? That is correct. Anything shorter of that could potentially, and I'm not saying it will, but could potentially cause some kind of difficult situation for us down the line. We're not predicting the will, but it could. Is that a fair assessment of where staff's position is on this issue? Correct. And... I guess I asked my colleagues, I'm sorry, uh, are you feeding me what to say? No, I'm actually reading my email. Oh. <laughs> my question to my colleagues, the ones that are not interrupting me, are uh, what is the difference between a four-month extension and six months other than just to say to reduce it, as long as we put the entire matter on a demand for this to be resolved. And I'm not saying I agree one way or the other. I'm just trying to get a feel from all sides. <clears throat> and I think Ms. Gutierrez has an answer for me, and I'd love to hear hers. Felix is next, and then, and then you, Marito. Look, let, let, let's take e each issue. With, with respect to, first of all, and, and Marie, I don't think there is any animus or that, that had a, a bad intent as to why this thing expired. Let me just say that. I think it just was an oversight and it happened. Okay? So, that said, number one. Well, she, excuse me for the interruption, but I think uh, Helen clarified that it really was not a, 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 an oversight per se since we don't really have a contract. And since there's no, nothing for no, us no, to no, have no, a no, 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 Mayor, Mayor, hold on. Uh, mayor, technically, mayor. Technically, there is a, Mayor, the, they were selected for a period of two years, and there's an expiration to that. Um, the, 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 contract has no, the contract has nothing to do with that. It's just they were selected for two, for two years, and it had to be renewed, and it lapsed. There was, that was an oversight. Oh, okay, sorry. let's put that aside. I believe that as board members, we have to, unfortunately, we're put in a bad position where we have to extend this 
for fiduciary as a fiduciary duty to this agency I'm because glad you were listening. because if something happens let's say that tomorrow the euro crashes and 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 things get nuts and we have to act we need to have a gun to be able to act absolutely now i will tell you this that a lot of the concerns that we raise and i think they're very valid concerns of perception staff knows this that if they're going to go to market on a deal they're going to have to come to this board to ask to do that and we're going to look at that and guess what i'm sure we're going to hear from different people as to whether we should go forward or not I, we have that safety valve that it has to come back to us. I don't think that we have an option of not extending this, whether it's month to month or six months. We have to, for safety, extend this as much as I don't like it, um, in my opinion. The question now becomes, you know, how long? But I do want to tell the board members that ultimately, if they have a deal that they're going to hash up in the next month, they're going to have to come back and bring it. Lewis brought up a good point, which is, well, why six months as opposed to one month or two months? Let, let, let me just tell you this, and I know nothing about finance other than, than the following. Say you're going to refinance your house, right? Hey, I want to refinance my house. You know, guess what? It's going to take you two months. So, right, so, so if you're doing, you know, a, a month to month, I think it makes it harder to have somebody Absolutely. to go out and do this. That's, that said, I believe... You know, again, the six month, as much as I don't like it, was a. Okay. That's so, what that's what. So, uh, I may respond uh, to Mr. Sartre first, Mr. All right, Mr. Mr. Martinez. My, my argument was specifically that. Why, if, if, if Helen is telling us that the best she could do is in four months, what is it to us to extend it 60 more days to ensure that it's done appropriately and, and still expeditiously, mm -hmm. but not force the envelope for 60 days. If we were talking six months to a year, then that's a big difference. But I don't see okay, the Ms. Gutierrez. going against what staff is recommending by going to six months. That's I, the issue much here the is whether you want to call the agreement, a contract, an agreement, uh, a letter of, of understanding, whatever you want to call it, it had a beginning and an end. Okay. And it ended in August 2012. Excuse me, August 2012. Wasn't that last month? Yeah. August 2012. And the conversation of what we are going to do, that we are going to refinance something, has been ongoing. We knew that this discussion has been in place. This is the side of the story that doesn't sound good, doesn't pass the smell test, doesn't feel right. It's not about one month. It's not about two months. It's not about six months. It's not about a year. It's about these people do not have a contract. It has stopped. It lapsed last month. And you are now engaging in an agreement with those same individuals on a potentially massive deal where there's money to be made and money to be paid, right. and yet they were not the ones that should have been doing this deal, or maybe they were if they would have won the other procurement that should have gone out six months ago okay. or sooner. That's my concern, guys. Okay. It's not about six months, and yes, I understand we've got to safeguard the agency, but quite frankly, I'm going to go in in the spirit of what council advised. I think it's very appropriate time that we request that all contracts be revisited and a matrix be provided to the board, start date, renewals, and end date. Uh, and I'll, rec we I'll recognize you for that motion important. after we finish this. Yes, yeah. All right, but we, we need to bring this to a, to a head now. So Mr. Malouf and then Mr. Sanabri, and then that's it. Mr. Chair, I, I just want to clarify to, the, to my colleagues on the board that I, I was looking at this in the spirit of collegiality to allow our team, professional staff, to deal with the business they have at hand on the table, but also start the process of procuring so that we don't end up in the position that we end up, that we're in today. That's all. Was, there are two different aspects mm. to the motion. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to upset the, the balance. I understand. Okay. There, there are two issues that are before us, and I think we've talked about this sufficiently, in my, my opinion. We're now beginning to repeat the same things over and over again. So I, I would, since I have said nothing up until now, I'd like to just make this simple statement. Um, 
We are where we are. Okay. We have a committee. You chair the committee. That committee discussed this uh, at length. Uh, it came <laughs> up with a recommendation. That is the recommendation of the executive director and Ms. Schaefer. Uh, unless there is a, uh, an overwhelming reason not to follow the committee's recommendation, I think we should stick to the committee's recommendation uh, and immediately advertise. The only exception that I would make, if I would respectfully request, that Mr. Maloof's suggestion is a good one, and that is six months or until the, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Wartman's recommendation, that, <clears throat> that, uh, that, uh, that we, uh, extend this for six months. The current, the current uh, contract, which is not a contract, but the current whatever agreement option, <clears throat> uh, until until the new procurement team is in place, and that would be the only. Except, and then the second motion that I think we should make, or you should make, is that we immediately advertise within whatever said, three months or whatever time you. you it, well, if I, I may, just I, to, I, if, I, if I may. Uh, one, one Mr. Salario, would you let Helen? No, because because, uh, it, because it may have something okay, to do with what Helen, you're going to say. I Ladies just, first. Thank you. I just want to clarify that we would have to come back to the Budget and Finance Committee to ask for approval of the criteria, the process, and the evaluation committee to um, partake in the in the process. So I understand that we are going to have a Budget and Finance Committee in the next few weeks. So we will bring that item back to you once that gets approved by the committee. Then we can move forward with All the process. Mr. Salario. I need to clarify one thing. I, I wasn't aware of this coming to my committee until a few days before. I wasn't even aware that there was a contract that had expired, okay? It was a last-minute thing. I got to tell you, it's a last-minute thing of endorsement of continuance of the underwriting team. That's the case, okay? So. I'm a principal person, and I don't like to extend contracts. I, if, if you got two years, like I got two years when I lease something or buy something, I know six months ahead. So, okay, but we're in where we are, as you stated. Okay. You uh, uh, reluctantly, I sympathize with the spirit of my committee to go six months. Personally, I don't, I don't buy into that, into doing that. What I would like to see, if it's something possible, is do a hybrid compromise here. But we do three months extension, and we extend another three months. But in the meantime, we also authorize Helen to, to go with, uh, with, the, with the new underwriting team. If that's, an, if that's a request to amend my motion uh, as a courtesy to the chair of the committee, that saw that heard this item, I'll accept that from the amendment. I would feel better. I was still <laughs> I want to. I want to clarify something. I'll vote yes on either one of these motions, but I'd rather have the one where we keep the. Right, I'm, I'm going to so let the uh, executive director have the last word if, if he feels that that's where okay. we can. Okay. I am okay with. So the so then the the motion, if I can if I can uh, uh, state it again, is that we extend the current agreement for a three-month period. Would you modify that and say that to the uh, January to the January meeting, which is three months? Because we, will extend, we will extend the current underwriting team for three months with the option of extending that, that falls December 29th. You know. Well, I don't know the dates, well, Mr. But Chairman. I do, but I do. See, and the, okay, and, I, well. and the problem is all I'm asking you to do is to extend okay. it to the January meeting. But date okay, certain. whatever date it is, it's three months. But we can extend it. But date certain. Huh? The, 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 oh. Hold it. Sorry. Hold it. With, with, a, with another three-month extension, should that be needed and necessary? And do it like that. Let it come back. Do We're not going to have a December meeting. As you know, we don't have a Christmas meeting. And, and, and okay, so maybe perhaps uh, council can, can uh, put together a motion. Okay. a motion. The spirit here is to did, go did with you, 90 days. Mr. Sanabria, did you want to... Did you want I, to? I believe that we do have a motion on the right. floor for I, Mr. Wartman. I don't think that it's been seconded. I actually had the, I made the motion to bring an amendment to. You, okay, we, the we've got amendment. some the, motions so here. The, my, my motion is, council and board members, that we extend the ability to utilize the existing team until the January meeting. 
uh, as a courtesy to the holidays uh, and our board, uh, and at the same time prepare uh, from this day forward a fast track or procurement to coincide with the end of that extension. Okay, there's That's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Did you get that? Second. The motion. Um, I'll, I'll second the motion. I, I, I don't. I think we're saying. I think we're. I think we need to reclarify that motion one more time. Um, Mr. Maloof, it, if I can, maybe rephrase it because I'm not sure I yeah. followed. If I understood correctly, your motion that was seconded by Mr. Lasarte yeah. is to extend the right of the current team, if MDX needs to go forward with some sort of refunding and that that, would be ex that authorization would be extended until the January board meeting? Correct. The January budget and finance? Uh, that's a the good January question. Board meeting? I, 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 I think I the January board, board. Until the January yeah. board meeting. Yeah. If, I may, if I may, board members, I think we're, again, confusing apples and oranges because the decision to refund will first have to go to the budget and finance. Of course. Right. right. And then the next question would be who's the appropriate do we have the time frame? Correct. The, the motion or the, the action requested today is simply to cover, is to extend an existing underwriting contract. And what they're doing is months until January. Four months well, it's January. been extended to the January meeting. Until the January, meeting. Until January, January board, board, meeting. Board, board, board meeting. Board meeting. And I'll tell you what, just keep it to that motion, and then I'll recognize right. you for a second motion. Okay. Okay? So, so if I did have your, your motion correctly, it's to extend the current team until the January board meeting, and I believe that Mr. Second. Sarte did second that. Fine, that's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion on this? Just a comment. On it, the, uh, just uh, a comment. Mr. Wartman had his hand up oh, first. This is for staff. <laughs> I believe there's no cost but to extend this agreement the way it is. There's no real cost to us. Of course no, not. Sir. Perfect. All right. Just, uh, just uh, I'm sure Marie doesn't need to be told this, but when you identify if you want to refinance, ref, you know, do that refinancing, that you just get it to Mr. Sanabria's committee, budget and finance, I guess, because it, it would need approval. Yes. So in his committee meeting, I believe, is prior to the board meeting in of January. Of course. So it will be lockstep and fall in place. And that's why we said the January board meeting, because right. the 100 days, you know, Leaves you in the high in the high end, so it doesn't make any sense. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, <clears throat> are we ready to vote on this thing now? All right, all those in favor of the motion. Roll call vote, Mr. Chair. Roll call vote. <laughs> Gutierrez. No. Mr. Lasarte. Yes. Mr. Malouf. Yes. Mr. Martinez. No. Mr. Pago. Yes. Mr. Sanabria. Yes. Mr. Wartman? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Fano? No. Chair Perret? I vote yes. Now, I recognize I'm going to make a motion about fast-tracking the RFP. Fast-tracking the RFP. Who wants to make that motion? Mr. Wartman, make, make your motion. I'd like to see that the RFP be expedited so that's completed and executed as soon as humanly possible, legally possible. Not, not to exceed? As fast as legally possible, I think. 90 that days? The request for qualifications will be submitted to the Budget and Finance Committee, the next Budget and Finance Committee meeting. That committee will decide the criteria, the evaluation factors, the oversight committee, so on and so forth, set the calendar, and at that point you will set the calendar for that expedition. Yeah. But the key is getting that qualifications package to does Budget it, and Finance. Does it have to come back meeting. from Budget and Finance to, yeah, of course. to the board? No, once it gets approval to advertise at Budget and Finance, it gets advertised. It comes back to the board later. Through yeah. the chair, I'll second that motion. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? Is it, are we clear on what we're voting on? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So it's carried unanimously. Now, I'd like to just make a comment into the record and for my colleagues on the board. Um, I've, been, I've been around this business for a long, long time. And I, I want to tell you that... Um, um, Having nine or ten firms involved, I know, helps us because we all have a lot of friends that want to be included. 
But, but let me tell you, the amount of money that they make, this is a very small agency. The amount of money they make is minimal. And you know what? I don't mean to be disrespectful because some of them are in the room, but the amount of interest is also minimal. Because, you know, we're just not that big a factor. Uh, I really strongly recommend that, you know, and whoever's going to lobby uh, and, and do this, they can lobby whether it's one, two, three, or ten. We now have nine. That's much, that's much too much. I think we really need to, to tighten it up to have, uh, you know, just one underwriter, maybe two, uh, and that could be a minority uh, uh, or a local firm or whatever. So that's just my opinion. To the chair? Please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for bringing up that point, and I won't, I won't belabor this, this issue. But when the very eloquent and thorough presentation was made by staff to the Operations Committee, and this board was invited to comment on us putting out projects that were not particularly in our work plan, uh, but were in concept and are needed here, but we just don't have the money yet until we finalize some, some uh, steps in the next uh, few weeks as to, you know, what our, our structure is going to be. The exec, very astute executive director brought up a point that we should perhaps consider, and this would be something that your committee, Mr. Sanabria, would, con would uh, consider, perhaps we should look at bundling all of the projects together so that you have a much larger a much more attractive and much more competitive finance package. You'll get interest. It will be cheaper. You'll have the funding to do it. Uh, and uh, perhaps it's something that, you know, we should consider as we... We'll, uh, we'll get you a written opinion from from Marie's team and, uh, and see if that's possible. I, it may not be possible, but if it is, it's something to consider. It's a great idea. Further, <clears throat> further discussion on, on item uh, 9D, which we've just concluded. We are now at the executive director's Actually, report. we, we got to go back to, are oh, we going to take it out of order? Yeah, we're going to take it okay. out of order because All right. <coughs> well, you know. I want Felix to hear your report and then, then he can leave. We're going back to the report. Board members, we haven't met since uh, June, so there's a lot to report, and I'm going to try to condense it as much as possible. Um, Mr. Maloof, you read my notes. Because the first comment that I was going to make was on State Road 83628, Project 83628, improvements on 836 between Lejeune Road and the uh, Toll Plaza. And, yes, that discussion did take place to try and figure out ways to advance those projects. What I want to report to this board is that we met with the mayor and commissioners of the city of Miami, briefed them on the project, and we held our public hearing on July 10th. Those documents are ready to go and, and, and be signed so that we can move forward into the next phase. And there are, fun, there are phases funded in the work program, but at the request of the Operations Committee, we're looking at bundling. In, um, in July, board members, we attended the Team Florida Floridians for Better Transportation and the, and the Transportation Committee meeting. The significance of that meeting was that we all were interviewed by the um, Cambridge Systematics Group uh, consulting team that is performing a, a study on behalf of the Florida Legislature for the Commission on possible efficiencies that could be reached by the expressway authorities in Florida's Turnpike and Florida Department of Transportation. Um, to that front, specifically to that front, MDX, Tampa Hillsboro, Florida's Turnpike, and Orlando uh, Orange County Expressway Authority signed a memorandum of understanding for the development of a centralized customer service center. That's a significant piece, first piece in moving forward to have one-stop customer service center for all everybody who rides the toll roads in Florida. We are now working on structuring an interlocal agreement that will require this board's approval. So as we structure that in interlocal agreement and we discuss governance, we discuss funding mechanisms and how it gets broken up formula, that agreement is going to have to get approved by this this board, and as I mentioned in the strategic plan, will have to go through various committees for that approval. On July 25th, Secretary Pago and I met with Secretary Ray LaHood and FTA Administrator uh, Rogoff, and we were joined at the meeting with uh, uh, folks from Florida International University, and we got about 30 minutes with the Secretary to discuss our collaborative efforts with FIU 
to look for improved transportation services between the university's campus and the Miami Intermodal Center, primarily express buses on State Road 836 in conjunction with other improvements that the university is making within its campus in collaboration with uh, the city of Sweetwater. So we had that conversation with the administrator and with the secretary, and it was because we were not awarded the Tiger Grant. So in, in that conversation, and Mr. Secretary, if I miss anything, please fill it in. He was very, he, uh, Mr. LaHood was very impressed that we were moving forward regardless of the federal dollars, that we have made all significant commitments to move this program forward regardless of the Tiger Front. So he said to continue to work together and to come back and see him in 60 days from when we met to discuss opportunities within the new federal reau reauthorization uh, bill. We've been meeting with the university and with the department and all the stakeholders, including Miami-Dade County, to develop what the ask is going to be in Washington when we go visit the secretary and the administrator. And it's going to happen in the, within the next 30 days. Um, as you know, board members, we did hold our strategic planning session on August 21st. Uh, it was a good session, but we left one issue out that we're going to cover in a future meeting and in the very near future. And that issue was the topic of project delivery options. And it was the article that HNTB had published on various opportunities for project delivery, be it design bill finance, full concession, some form of public-private partnerships. That conversation, because of lack of time at that strategic meeting, we weren't able to address. I've been working with the chairman to structure, to, to develop another workshop so we can discuss those uh, what we've learned of project delivery and opportunities to advance some projects. Um, to those board members that attended the uh, 80th annual IBTTA meeting in Orlando, and I'm talking fast, um, it was a very successful meeting. We were one of the host agencies. We had representation from around the world. Um, from my specific, uh, uh, what I got out of that meeting specifically was we were able to talk to other partners in the U.S. and abroad on how we're going to implement national interoperability pursuant to the federal requirements that were just adopted. By 2016, the, the federal government has asked, Congress has asked, that there be a national interoperability program. In other words, if you drive from New Jersey to Miami, you shouldn't have to have three transponders. That's, um, within, three years. that's within three years. Uh, they didn't specify technology. They, did, they left it up to industry and we're going to take them up on that offer. So to that end, we've, uh, we've assembled the National Interoperability Coordinating Group. Florida, Texas, California, Washington State, Georgia are all individually uh, represented, and then the major organizations that deal with the toll industry are also represented. Uh, Director uh, Scassetti from Florida's Turnpike is representing Florida, and I'm representing the, IB, the International Bridge Tunnel and Turnpike Association. And, and the specific is not really to, to get into the technology, because we know the technology works. The issue is specifically to focus on public relations, political, fiscal, business case needs that impact the industry and in moving forward. It's very easy to say we want this machine to read a tag between New Jersey and Miami or between Washington State and Colorado. The real issue is how do you work it in the back office? How do the business rules all uh, align? How do you exchange the information and how do you ensure that the information is correct? So, and then how do you say that and how do you tell that story? Um, that's what this uh, National Interoperability Group is, is looking at. There were many, many examples, uh, Mr. Chair and, and board members at IBTTA, of examples uh, around the country, around the world, on how they're delivering projects from a technology standpoint, taking advantage of uh, intelligent transportation and the next wave of intelligent transportation and blending it with tolling. And uh, Director Lou Rigados headed up a track where there was various presentations made on different products and different strategies that are being implemented for that. And then finally, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I want to remind everybody that next Tuesday, it's very important we have a workshop for ORT for 836 and 112. It is very, very important that we participate and understand we are going to be briefing board members. Many of you have already set up appointments. Those that haven't, you know, we will work with you to, to go anywhere and brief you prior to that meeting. That's significant moving forward. Our, our mission of ORT is coming to a head in, in June of 2014, 
and we need to prepare for that and make sure that we explain it correctly and move forward with all the different issues. So with that, Mr. Chair, I, I conclude my report. Okay, uh, and I can't stress uh, enough that what our executive director just told us is very, very, very important. We really need to pay attention. Uh, this is a critical time. <clears throat> I might take this opportunity to, uh, to put into the record what we all know, that our able executive director uh, is now in line to be the <clears throat> the uh, chairman of the IBTTA for the year 2015, which not only puts MDX on the map, but also uh, uh, puts, uh, puts a lot of the issues that we care about on the forefront, because as, as you know, in the IBTTA, like other organizations, there's a succession process, and and you begin, so you're in it, you're, once you're in the tube, you're in there for a couple of years. So Javier is now coming into a very important position at IBTTA, and I think uh, a lot of important MDX issues that we and Florida are concerned with, I think will be coming to the forefront. So on behalf of all of us, our congratulations to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your support. If okay. Right. Uh, all right. Now, now we are on item... Oh, wait a moment. Treasurer's report. report. Sorry. Uh, there's, uh, it's, it's not to be redundant. Uh, the executive director talked about the personal briefings. Please, please be there. There's some three very important issues. They'll determine the future of MDX henceforth. So that's it. All right. Is there, is there anything else before we take up item 9B? Thank you. We're now on line B. Um, Mr. Chair, this is an item that has uh, been brought uh, two different times to the Operations Committee. And there's a number of action items contained under 9B. Um, just to give you kind of a, a pretty brief uh, recap, after the contract for the DMS project was awarded and, in fact, executed by MDX. Uh, it was brought to the attention of this board. You've all received communications that there was a problem, uh, at least as to the number one proposer, that they did not meet the definition of a design-build firm. Uh, after looking at that very closely and doing some research, um, and both from a factual standpoint and a legal standpoint, uh, the procurement office determined that, in fact, the lowest proposer or the number one ranked proposer as well as the number three ranked proposer did not meet that statutory definition. And from a legal standpoint, on my review, it's very clear there are uh, there is at least one case uh, out of the Northern District of Florida that has said that you really do not have the option to enter into a contract for um, services under CCNA where that process does not exactly conform to the statutory requirements. And so the legal advice that we have given to um, the operations committee and that is the basis of their recommendation to this board is that the number one and number three pr ranked proposer um, be deemed non-responsive is one of the items. The other item is that the contract that MDX did sign is a contract that is not authorized by law and therefore um, is void as against public policy. So that's one of the other items that we are bringing to the board that that contract be voided. Um, the other two parts of the recommendation, um, and the th I'm sorry, the third part of the recommendation and this is uh, the point that was discussed two different times with the Operations Committee. The first time that this came to the Operations Committee, there was a belief that the number two ranked firm, in fact, was under the engineer's estimate. There was an error that staff um, made in presenting information to the Operations Committee the first time. We brought that back and corrected it and informed the committee that, in fact, all three responsive proposers that were remaining, that their proposed prices were, in fact, in excess of 
what had been the modified engineer's estimate. And so that's the basis that we have now brought this issue before okay, the board. Are, are, and, it, and Mr. Maloof was obviously chair of the committee. Are we all that. aware of what the modified, you just said the modified um, engineering uh, yes, and, and I think that um, Mr. Lurigatos can explain how that all occurred and what what uh, happened with another JPA that caused us to take certain certain parts well, I of think that's that an important part contract of thing. out of out of that proposal. So, so uh, Alfred, why don't you tell us? Yes, board members, as part of the process of this contract to implement system-wide dynamic message signs, there are some signs that through the Big interchange project, A36, A26. We actually incorporated some of those signs in a, in, a, in a JPA that we brought to you, and we deducted that from the engineer's estimate. And how much was that? It it, deduct, it changed the estimate from 9.345 million to 8.43 million. So it's almost a million dollars. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's important that we that we're all aware of, of those numbers. And and that was part of the RFP via addendum number four that was just described in the in the package. Okay. So we have three issues before us. Now, um, I, uh, you know, in the public portion of this, uh, Mr. Eugenio uh, Ochoa of Miller wanted to speak. And I put him off until this motion. The, the problem that, that that brings is that the moment that Mr. Ochoa speaks for one of the contractors, I think it would be unfair for me to stop anybody else from speaking. So I just want you to understand. If that. I may have some point of clarification, Please. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm trying to understand the uh, why are we voiding a contract? Uh, is that non-compliance also? Is that what it is? Non-compliance. Yes. So we don't have uh, after at the end of the day we need to re-procure. Right. That's, that's what's necessary. Clean the slate and re-procure. Mm -hmm. That's the recommendation. Thank you, sir. All right. It, it, does anybody have any objections? Then, if we go, to, because once we go into this route, I'm not going to be able to stop others from speaking. Is there any, to, is there any time limit? That uh, they three minutes, speak? of course. Okay. Thank you. And, and I would agree with you, Mr. Chair. All that wish to be heard should be heard on this matter. If well, they're here. The, well, if they're here, I mean, if they're here. Right. the moment you open it up to one, you have to, in fairness, Absolutely open it correct. to others. All right, Mr. Choi, you have three minutes. Uh, who's the timekeeper here? Lisa. We take care of it. Lisa will let me know in three minutes or up. Um, thank you very much. I also don't have an issue if someone wants to speak before us. I will yield our time to after. Go ahead, Mr. Ochoa. All right. Um, I'd like some, to pass something out that was sent Please. via email. We won't, pass Miller, Miller. We, we, won't, we won't hold that time against you. All right. Go thank ahead. you. I appreciate that. Um, my name is Eugenio Ochoa, a member, a team member of the Miller team. My address is 4868 Southwest 72nd Avenue. Again, my name is Eugene Ochoa, and this is Mr. Go ahead. Bob Hernandez of Miller Electric, 1111 Southwest 1st Avenue, Miami, Florida. At the original operations committee, it was discussed that our team, uh, it would be recommended to the board that our team be ranked the number one a, a team on a process of, of elimination. But one of the items that you did, do not have before you is that there was a request from this board or from the operations committee, a, I correct myself, uh, that we relook at the numbers. Uh, we were in that process, which is normal for all bids, and we've done that. And since that time, um, we did not have an opportunity to speak at the last operations committee uh, to present to you this information. But uh, our team has uh, voluntarily lowered our bid um, from the original that we had to 8.4 uh, 8. 8. million, which is $30,000 below the, the estimate. We believe this is in the best interest of the MDX, um, and we're ready to work. Uh, and we wanted you to have that information in front of you before you made uh, a decision. Thank you for your statement. Any, I think you can sit down because otherwise we're going to, we, you want to engage with them? Actually, I have a question with legal counsel. But oh, 
then Mr. Schor. And you have before you an official letter from us stating our position. We have it in front of us. Thank you, Mr. Schor. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. All right. Would you, Mr. Wharton? Okay. As far as legal counsel, when we go and procure bids, and I know there's negotiations. I can't hear you. Okay. Sorry. When we go and procure bids, there's negotiations after, but the price has to be at a certain point to get through the bid process and then negotiations? This was not a negotiated procurement. Okay. What – is this something that can be done, or is this something that cannot be accepted, something like this? I don't know. Let me rephrase your question for you. Are you asking me, is this board allowed to consider the letter that has been presented to you by Miller to voluntarily lower their bid price? Yes, you may consider it. Again, we need to be sure that you have all pertinent information before you. One of the things that – and Helen may be able to speak to this in more detail, but what you have before you is a bottom line price. There is no actual bid to be evaluated, so there's no opportunity for the procurement office to look at any backup. There was no backup detail to this amount provided, and so that limits really the ability for staff to evaluate this $8.4 million offer that has been provided to MDX. I'm sorry. In addition to that, my understanding is that staff's recommendation to the operations committee went – had a number of aspects to it beyond just the fact that the remaining three responsive bids were above the engineer's estimate. At that point, staff said that they were going to go back and take a look at the scope of this project because the three bids were above the engineer's estimate and relook and see whether there was some better way to draft the scope for this particular project, and Mr. Lurigatos can probably address that in terms of what factors they would be taking a look at. Before you go to that, I have a question to follow up. If we were able to look at this, that was the original bid was higher, now it's under. Does that mean the others that met the qualifications, are they able to also send in things, or is this the only – how does that work? This really is not part of any MDX-approved procurement process. We are just providing you with a copy of a communication that was provided to the procurement office. The drafter of the letter has had an opportunity to address you, but again, one of the concerns that I would raise is that it is outside of our normal processes and there is not any backup information that we would be able at this point to give you any more detailed evaluation of what might be involved in this. There are a number of things that a procurement office takes a look at, and Helen, if you want to kind of jump in and talk about the type of evaluation that you do when you do take a look at an overall proposed price that would be submitted. From the perspective of – Martinez, Smith, Fano, Gutierrez. Mr. Chairman, I was – before we get into any extensive discussion, I was wondering if there were any other bidders that wished to be heard so we could hear from all aspects first and then get into our – into a more thorough discussion. That was announced, Mr. Martinez, and nobody stood up. Okay. But I am happy to say, are there any of the other bidders that are present at this time that wish to speak? Let's – proposers. 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 I mean proposers. I'm sorry. You're correct. All right. Mr. Martinez. Mr. Chair, I was at the original Operations Committee meeting on this matter. For multiple – I appreciate what Miller is trying to do here, but I don't think we have any choice whatsoever but to really start from scratch, and I will tell you why. We were given information that their bid was below the amount that was procured for. Many of us were supportive of discounting the original winners of the procurement with the understanding that the next bid was underneath it. For us now, several weeks later, to say we were wrong, oh, but by the way, you can now lower your bid to meet below guidelines, 
this really doesn't and not, pass the not, smell test in any not, way, shape, not, or form. And not to mention the president. That and not to mention the president. And this has nothing to do with Miller Electronics at all. I, 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 I appreciate their effort here. They certainly took some of the, the information that they heard at that first board meeting into consideration when they presented this. But I don't think we have any other choice, and I would vote against any other Okay. remedy but to start the entire process over again for no other reason than to make sure everything is clearly above board. There were mistakes made before we actually made a decision to disqualify someone. No, I'm going to I'm get it. it was, first, the mistake was that we actually were going to grant a contract to someone who needed to be deemed ineligible. Then at the meeting when we had, and it was extensively discussed at that meeting, why we should go with Miller, why we should do this, why we should do that. Now there was more mistakes made again. That's too, too many mistakes. And I feel that for transparency purposes, and this is a board that has, has worked very hard to have a very strong, clean reputation. The, the, you know, I welcome Miller to, to re to mm -hmm. bid, to re to re offer a, a offer opportunity to go for the procurement, but I cannot see anything other than um, starting over. And I, I welcome my colleague, and I will make the motion to uh, to. I'd recognize you for that purpose, and after everybody has an opportunity Very to speak, Ms. Smith, final. Just as a point of clarification, Helen, the other proposers they are compliant; they're above the amount that they could go, but they w all other terms were compliant. Yes. So for intents and purposes, and just again, this is a point of clarification, if they were here in the audience, they could present us with a similar type letter. Yes. Yes. They're not here. No. So that adds insult to injury. I don't think it's fair. So I, I appreciate the fact that you all spend the time and energy. I would encourage you to shift that energy and channel it toward a new proposal. Thank you. All right. Um, Ms. Gutierrez. Thank you. Um, I, I think I, I need to get some things clarified. First is why does council say that Miller is non-compliance now? It, because they, you heard you they are compliant. I, I did they not. Are compliant. They are compliant. Their bid is um, the, the official uh, proposal that contained a price proposal um, we believed was under the engineer's estimate. Staff made an error in what the number of the engineer's estimate was. So when we told the operations committee that Miller's proposal was under the engineer's estimate, that was incorrect. It was over the engineer's estimate. And really that discussion revolved around what might be some appropriate matters that the committee might recommend for um, rejecting all bids, and, and very much so when all of your bids are above your budgeted or engineer's amount, that's a very rational reason that you would reject all bids. Um, Board Member Martinez has articulated some other reasons that he has concerns with the process. And I believe that there has also been uh, some discussion with staff that because the three responsive or appropriate bids were all above the actual engineer's estimate, that it might be appropriate to go back and take a look at the scope to determine whether the scope was appropriate. Okay, if I may. But in essence, really what happened in the second operations meeting, and I will say I was at the first, I was at the second, I was participating of all, and I am at the board meeting. So I followed the whole process from beginning to the end. What actually happened in the second operations meeting is the only thing that we did not know or that we did not understand was the fact that was not shared with us that there was a fourth addendum that was added to the procurement that actually lowered the estimate that in this case would have been at 84 something, 8.4, okay? Which that's really in essence what we're talking about. That yes, was not missed and addressed to us in the second operations meeting, at which time we all decided that let's Reprocure, given the fact that now we're talking about it's going to cost us another million something if we award this contract to Miller if we continue through this process. Hence, a week ago, we had the meeting, and apparently, God has spoken to Miller and has asked them and told them, You better reconsider 
because you're done if you don't come in with 8.4. I'm glad that the light hit them. And thank you very much. You could have saved everybody a lot of time and aggravation if they would have stepped up to the plate at ops. I think that would have been great. That, that's a point that I like to make. There is a pun intended. It's too bad that it took them so long to actually come to their senses and realize that they had this opportunity, they had this contract, and they could have saved the day and saved the aggravation and all the miscommunication at 8.4 and saved the agency a lot of money. I think we really do need to stop for a moment and pause, okay? Because it's called savings or it's called re-procuring and spending more, okay? At this case, the, the, the pain is the fact that we didn't know, because they did win the bid. There's nothing that was done wrong by them. They won. They were the second responded that qualified, that was in compliance, except it was higher. The only thing they've done now, okay, is that they've now come to their senses in terms of the addendum. Hey, they've made it to the point that it's good for the agency. And I think that we should consider to accept this and move on because they are in compliance. All right. Uh, there, there it, I'm going to recognize Mr. Martinez for a motion, which is what I said I would do, but, but, I, but I want to let everybody have an opportunity to speak. Mr. Pagel. I, I just have one question for Alfred. Um, in reviewing the spec package, did you find any errors that would be rectified by re-advertising? And what was asked of the proposals to bid? As far as scope, no. There was no errors in the spec package itself. What we, what we would revise would be, or look at revising, would be actual scope. Maybe an arterial DMS sign would drop out. Something related to cost savings because a lot of the bids came in higher than we anticipated. So you would reduce scope, which is not the same package, in order to stay within the budget that is planned. Correct. By there was the no industry. issues related to this, the actual package itself. Okay. Um, I routinely within the department, um, while the construction industry has been hurting, uh, the one area that's is doing fairly good is the IT area, with a lot of uh, work out there, and you know. An engineer's estimate is an engineer's estimate. The public purpose is through the bid process, and we've gone through a, a very public bidding process. Unfortunately, some proposals didn't turn in the proper uh, documentations to make their bids uh, formal and be acceptable by the agency. Um, certainly, you know, I, you know, I'm not into the negotiation from the dais, uh, but you know, that remains to the executive director and his team to work out. You have a bid before you. It's uh, based on the scope of work that was put out by this agency. If that scope is changed now because of other information become available that doesn't meet the agency's need, then I recommend you reject. But if that's not the case and you got work to do, hey, we need to get people to work. Mm -hmm. wait, 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 wait. The chair. Yeah. He's agreeing with what I'm saying. The scope hasn't changed. We should accept. If the scope changes, then we re procure. Why do you have budget? Exactly. Have you, have you spoken on this issue yet? No. Not yet. Okay. I was, I was saving, right. saving it to last, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. I just wanted to add some clarity. And there's a much bigger issue than this actual procurement that we're trying to uh, resolve. Is is did we confirm in all actuality that a new procurement would actually cost more? We don't know that. Well, there has been some discussion. My question, uh, Ms. Gutierrez, was is that is, is it, am I correct to understand that a new procurement would actually cost more? And can you confirm that, Mr. Mr. Chair? Director, Director? A new procurement is time. Time is money. It well, costs well, both ways to people that I have would, to spend I, I, writing the proposal okay. and, and read advertising, redoing everything. Okay, okay. I, 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 was under, I was on the understanding that there was a million dollars or some sort of difference. Mr. Pago? Okay. Okay. Well, well, my question was directed. I mean, he, they've reduced a million dollars, but the low bid was seven million six. So uh, I, obviously there's someone who was willing to bid it for less. So to the question as to whether or not 
we would get a lower bid. Who knows? But I mean, somebody did bid seven million six. The, but, 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 but now, Mr. Move, after you finish, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask our executive director, who has not said a word yet, uh, as to what his recommendation yeah, is. That's my question. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I will um, address this issue again. Um, we held two. Well, well, no, not again, because no, uh, no. you addressed it at the operating at the committee, but there are people here who are not at the operations committee. committee. You're correct. At the operations, we had two operations committee meetings. The first one, um, when the issue came up of the legal definition of a design build, we extensively discussed what our options were legally from a procurement and the discretion that the board had. At that time, all three proposers addressed the board, you know, uh, thoroughly and, and stated their cases. We got into a very long discussion on the cost, and we based a lot of our recommendation on the fact that the bidders came in below the engineer's estimate. So if we were going from number one, and that didn't exist because they didn't have the license, so from our perspective, you can't even consider that price, then number two was qualified and was underneath the engineer's estimate. The only question that I asked, and the reason I make the recommendation, because in the second, in the second uh, operations committee, staff recommendation is to <clears throat> re-procure. The only reason I make that recommendation is because I'll ask, this, I'll ask myself this question. We had a long conversation in the first operations committee meeting. It, so it, it, it was about price. We missed the addenda. We missed adjusting the, the, uh, the, the addenda. But all the proposers who addressed us that day had those bid documents. They got the same addenda. They knew the engineer's estimate was below. None of that was discussed that day either. I can't play Monday morning quarterback, and I don't know what your decision would be. But if you would have known that all the estimates were above the engineer's estimate at $8.4 million, what would your decision have been that day? I don't know what it is. Therefore, from my perspective, I don't think that I, as the executive director, gave you the information necessary to make a valid decision. And at because of that, at that particular time, and because of that, at the second operations committee, we made a recommendation, obviously, and of course, there is discretion. And it is documented in the, air, in the uh, agenda item report, but our recommendation was to start this process and keep the integrity of the agency, you know, at the level it's always been. Your recommendation That's today. the recommendation that stands yeah. before, yes, absolutely, before the uh, so, so, So what we have is a recommendation from the administration that, uh, that we rebid this, this item. That was also discussed at the uh, operating committee, and that was the, that was the, um, and, and you, uh, uh, Al were the chair of it, so I'll let you have the last word, and then I'll recognize Mr. Martinez if he still wants to make the motion. Irrespective of the the cost, Mr. Chair and, and, and board members, and the time, we thought that of utmost paramount importance was to maintain the integrity not only of our agency, but of the process. And after, you know, a long and challenging deliberation and, and many, many meetings, uh, we anguished over the best way to achieve that. And the, the, what we arrived at was, is that we um, step back, on, on the one hand, view what went wrong, seek to avoid those issues in the future, and on the other hand, with respect to the procurement, is to wipe the slate clean, put everybody on a level playing field, and to proceed again. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I just say that I, I agree with the administration's recommendation and uh, the chair of the committee, but I uh, recognize Mr. Martinez if he wants to make a motion. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I believe we need to make three motions here. Is that correct? Uh, there, there are three recommendations. Three, there's three action items here. Yes, sir. So I would move, uh, Mr. Chair, that we file the recommendation by staff, number one, to void the contract with Systems Integration and Maintenance, SIM. 
Number two. Go ahead, let's take it one at a time. Very good. So I recognize you for that motion. Is there a second? I'd like to second it. Is there further discussion on item number one, which is the uh, operation committee's recommendation to void the contract with SIM? That's, um, I think, number two, actually. That's actually number one. one. Number, number one. one. It's one? What about the non the deemed non responsive? That's number, number two. two. That's number two. Oh, you flipped them? No, they're there. Oh, okay. The on the they're well, switched on here. Okay. Well, on the motion that's before us, which is the SIM right. issue, um, is there a further discussion on that? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So that's carried unanimous. Now with regards to number two. To declare non responsive the proposals submitted by SIMS and by Transcore LP. All right. Is there a second? There's second. a second to the motion. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's carried unanimous. Now we're on the third issue, which is the approval of operating committee recommendation to reject all proposals received for the project. And I make that motion as well. All right. So there's a motion that, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, that all proposals be rejected. And that the matter be resubmitted for that's a, I'm gonna, I, I, That's going to be the next motion. Okay. I'm going to put that in a separate motion. Then I second. All right, there's a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? discussion. Under discussion. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, from, from legal, from Pam, this letter, just, just for my education, is this letter something that is actually acceptable as as a contractual change or modification, it's just a letter. This is just a letter. It does not follow the MDX procurement process. And as I mentioned, that there is no backup or opportunity for our procurement office to do due diligence to right. look at the. Although they did it in good faith. And uh, I, I, said, I think it was offered in good faith, absolutely. Yeah, and and, and for, I think that they, for, they for, were. For our education, those are uh, on, in the audience, is that this is not the way to do it. It would not be my recommendation of the process okay, to follow. How would, you, how would somebody do it? Just give you an addendum to their proposal, whatever the case may be, right? Go through Helen's office. Call yes, Helen, sir. everybody. All right, thank you. That's it. Okay. One, two, one. Yeah, Gus, go ahead. Question. Um, have you, I, yes. From a budgeting point of view, Correct. okay, um, you know, often, as you know, the department bids projects, and uh, they may or may not be within tolerance of the engineer's estimate. And usually, within certain ranges, uh, we have budget to <coughs> accept and capture savings in other bids and, you know, be able to make a project a project. Uh, I guess the, the one question that, in my mind, has not really been adequately answered is it has been said that it will have to go into the contingency in order to award this contract if the board so elects. Um, but the ramifications of that contingency or what would happen if we did vote to uh, award this contract was not addressed. And maybe that's the discussion that needs to be had. Um, or if it's the recommendation of staff that we want to reduce scope. You know what? The world's turned a lot of times since the bids came in, but I need to hear that. It's both uh, Gus and uh, Secretary Pago. We discussed that if we award this contract at the bid price before we got this letter, the way we would cover, because it's always the discretion of the board, to award a contract. We would, we would have to cover the increased cost by taking contingency, by taking money out of the contingency within our work plan. That's number one. Number two, and I go back uh, to the conversation we had the day of the operations committee, is the reason we proposed to go to number two at the time, even though it was $1.6 million over the one that we opened that wasn't valid, but there was a big conversation about that. The reason we did it is because there was a schedule impact. We have projects on 836 that are going to be under construction. These things, these projects were all lined up so that the DMS signs would be in place prior. Based on that conversation, based on our recommendation that day, the board took action. And my problem is that we gave you information that was not correct. You took an action. That's it. Now, we come back after you in the second time, in the second meeting, and we fix that. That's fine. Our recommendation to you to go back to re-procure is twofold. Number one, we're going to look at the scope for obvious reasons because all the bids had come up above. So as Director Lurigato said, 
we will probably reduce some of this, the locations. And number two, schedule. Schedule, because there's no question. Now we have to figure out how to still implement the DMS signs on our system while we have the construction on 836 ongoing, so there probably is going to be modifications to a schedule. Those were the two reasons why we made the recommendation to you at the second operations committee meeting. Ms. Gutierrez. Yeah. The thing that I still have a hiccup over is the fact that we're still concentrated on the other figure, on the figure at the operations meeting, at the figure that was above one point, a million something. We are now in a new day in front of us, an opportunity to seize the opportunity with a contractor that won the contract fair and square. And during contract negotiation and careful thought, he has decided to provide to us a letter that says, I will do this job at 8.4. Okay? We need to consider that. Which is a reduction of a million dollars. Exactly. It is that million dollar savings that we knew that we needed that is in our budget that allows us not to change the scope, that allows us not to change the time frame, allows us to proceed forward, forward at the same amount that we, the agency, wanted to and felt was the right amount. It is the prerogative of a person that has won a contract in the midst of negotiation during the course of negotiation to decide that even though I bid it X amount of money, I now want to bid lower. Let you have the savings. Let us, for our users, save the savings. That's the part that I have a hiccup over that we are really sort of like saying, look, so what? You gave this to us. Well, I only want to concentrate on what I want to concentrate, and I want to ignore this letter. Listen, it would only be just and fair, okay, that we actually entertain and negotiate and make sure that this 8.4 letter is exactly, precisely, what we intended to secure on the basis of what they won. And if it is, hey, they won it fair and square. And now it's at the right price. Why? Why are we now effectuated? We have to change. We got to move on. We got to go forward. Wait a second. It's no longer second operations meeting. It is now at the board meeting to decide and approve what is right for the agency. You are now saving the money. It is a million dollars, guys. It is a million dollars something. And you don't have to change the scope, and your timeline doesn't change, and it's too bad we don't like these people, or we do like them, and it's not a personality contest. It's called you're a professional. You can do the job. Too bad you didn't do this at ops. You did it now. It's you can do it at the right kind of money. Why are we not accepting? Why are we not considering? Why are we not saying, oh, this isn't the right way the letter should be coming in? Come on, guys. They refer to the RFQ. They say what it is, and it's the same scope, and it is this price. You know, it's called semantics. You know what? Dog, it barks, it walks. And it does number two also. Yeah, and we are only wanting to concentrate on number two when in reality it is right. That's the part that I just don't understand from this board. All right, Ms. Smith's final, and then Mr. Malouf. I really disagree with you, Maritza. No. But this one does not smell, pass the smell test, in my view. See, that's my the humble problem. opinion. That's the problem. I, I, everything you say has logic, merit. logic and merit. But in my view, this is just... But the contractor didn't, if I may, Mr. Chair. The contractor did It has nothing to do wrong. with the contractor. Staff. It's not the contractor. You see, we're then penalizing... This, this is the hiccup I have. We are penalizing the contractor when, in essence, the contractor didn't do anything wrong. It was staff that did it wrong. It was staff that sat here and knowingly knew information and no, didn't tell fair. our... That's God, not fair, no, We know they knew. 
That's not they fair. did not. They did not say they didn't know. They knew. They did not voice to the executive director during the time of the discussion well, that there was a fourth that, addendum. That, wait, 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 wait. Because, point because, that I'm because that, that's a very strong statement. And if if you're right on that, that then that. Yeah. They knew. They knew. They decided not to because it wasn't the right time, it wasn't the right moment, whatever it is. Communication sometimes breaks down. And communication broke down in operations meeting number two. What I say, now it's time to repair the damage that's been done. We can. Repair doesn't necessarily mean just go ahead and procure. It not? means Mr. Chair, wait, 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 wait. You know, out of courtesy to the administration, I, I think uh, I have to recognize the executive director because that was a pretty strong statement. Yes, uh, and I've addressed that. And for clarification, that was at the first operations committee meeting. At the first operations committee meeting, we had a long discussion. And after that meeting, I was made aware that there was people that may have known it and didn't say anything. I've addressed that issue with my staff, my consultants, and everyone. And that is the last time it will happen. Right. Again, I go back. That's the first operations committee meeting. We addressed it in the second one. I addressed this issue in the second one. I, I'll go back to this letter. And, and I, have, I these are my friends. All of these guys are friends. This has nothing to do in with business, friends. In business, there's no friends when you're talking about money. Here. In this case, uh, this is this just This is not money. about friends or not friends or, or any of that stuff. Have we been negotiating with with uh, with the consultant? What communications have we had with uh, with Miller, Ms. Ms. Cordero? Nothing but the fact that we were keeping them informed of the process that we have been following in informing and the we, operations and we committee. And received a formal letter from them holding their prices for a period of time. Correct. Correct. Okay. And After the it. first that operations the only, committee, we've asked them to. That was the only communication we've had with them, yes. except for this today. It, yes. That's that's it. All right, Mr. Miller. I just have two questions of, um, you know, I'm a very um, passionate person when it comes to especially procurement and transportation and public policy. And, you know, sometimes I take a leap and it's, uh, it's to say it's very reflective. I just have two questions uh, for, for uh, the executive director. One, can this company, in your, in your opinion, can this company do the job? Absolutely, yes, they can. Okay. And two, is this a fair price? I'm only basing it on the, the letter, so I can't give you a complete answer. Based on the letter? Based on the letter, it's within our engineer's estimate. Okay. It's 30000 below. As a courtesy to my colleague, if she makes a motion for discussion purposes, I will second it and... We can. Discussion can what? Can what There's already been a motion made by me. It's been there, there is a motion on the floor, and there has been a second. Now that's what's before us. So technically, for for you to get to what you're, what you want, or what Marissa wants to do, then either the the maker of the motion has to withdraw it, which he can, or the seconder, or or no, no, we haven't passed motion three. Uh, or we have to then defeat that motion and then go to the. All right. He's a the litigator, question. debater. He ain't gonna withdraw. So, in other words, the the, the yeah, it, it really accurate. The, 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 the motion, the motion that stands before us, um, is a motion that the operating committee's recommendation to reject all proposals received for the project. That's the motion, and that was what was seconded. That's what's being and recommended we, by the administration, and if I'm not mistaken, um, you didn't quite recommend that, but you alluded to the issues of related to it. Um, Ms. Leslie. I, uh, I'm, I'm not making any comment on or recommending the motion. One well, I understand that. It, I understand. I understand. Mr. Yeah. Chair, let's, um, I'd like to call the question and then see if it, it, it uh, passes right, the, or the, fails, the, and if not, we The can. question has been called. So um, do it by roll. Do you understand what the motion is? Call the roll. Ms. Gutierrez. No. Mr. Maloof. No. Mr. Martinez. Yes. Mr. Pago. No. Mr. Sanabria. No. Mr. Wartman. 
Um, Ms. Fano? Yes. Chair Ferrey? I vote yes. So, where does it stand? Mm -hmm. Tie, it oh, fails. So when you have a four to four vote, the motion fails. The motion fails. So, therefore, uh, I recognize you, Mr. Malou, for the purposes of making a motion. Uh, actually, I'll defer to Ms. Gutierrez. Ms. Gutierrez. Thank oh. you. I think it's only fair that, that the motion, in this case, it's a dual motion, that we proceed to finalize negotiations and accept the $8.4 million. Well, wait, wait. Bid. Well, why limit it to 8.4? Because that's their bid based on the letter. Wait, that we proceed to negotiate and finalize negotiations based on the 8.4. If it ends up being less than that, that we pursue and we accept. That's part of the motion. But at the same time, it's dual that in case negotiations break down and the number is not reached based, based on the scope of services that was initially advertised, that they are bidding on the 8.4 that we immediately procure. So what I am doing is the following. You either accept and you stay by what you're saying, and it is what it is, and the scope hasn't changed, or we move forward. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry, I have to interject here, and this goes back to our first operations committee, um, Mr. Maloof asked the question whether we could negotiate with any of the proposers. And my legal advice then and my legal advice today is that you may not. That is not how this project was put out on the street. Oh, it's a bit. And we may not. It, it, it is a, a price Council. proposal, and we cannot negotiate. It is not that so, type of Mr. Procurement. Chair. So I'll, I'll, chair clear the, I'll clear, I'll clear the, um, my motion is that we move to accept the 8.5, okay. the 8.4. 8 the 8.4. Mm -hmm. That's the motion. Is there a second? I want, I want further clarification. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute. They're waitable, but for, for the purposes of, of discussion, there is a second. And All right. I have a comment. Go ahead. I believe, Madam Council, that the statute require, prevents, prohibits you from forcing them to negotiate. But if the proposer offers a lower price, you may accept it. And, and it may be some semantics, Mr. Maloof. Uh, there's nothing that precludes a proposer from voluntarily proposing a lower amount, and they have done that in a lump sum in this letter. Thank you. We may not negotiate with them. I understand. Okay, may, may, I, may I? Mr. Uh, Sanabria. Mr. Thank you. And then Ms. Smith. All right, this is a, a legal question, Pam. Yes, sir. The, the, there was three proposers. Give me a little history. There was three proposers. And there, there was originally five. Two okay, have now the, been deemed non-responsive. So all have been non-responsive no. except for this one? No, no, sir. There are three that remain responsive. Three remain responsive. Yes, sir. If, if okay. And, and the numbers that they brought forth was what? What was their numbers? What was their bid numbers? I'll have to see how all has above all of this available. They were between nine million and ten million. One was nine okay, million. Okay, so this is one of the three million. proposers, right? That that the final in the final list. Yes. And the other two met all the requirements as well. Yes. So, but, but now we have, wait, wait, wait. Before we do, I just want to understand this. So, this proposer is coming forth and making a letter of recommendation that they are down costing their, their bid. Is that right? Is yes. that where, is that? Yes, sir. Okay, but the other two proposers haven't done that. No, sir. Have, they weren't given the opportunity. No, no. It well, wait, 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 let me, let me, I got the floor, I got the floor. No, Mr. Sanabria no. has the floor. I have the finish. floor. No. I want to know exactly where we are. All right, are you finished now? No. Go ahead. But let me just clarify that what I said, no, they have not done giving us a lower price. The process did not include a, fi a best and final offer, so we have not requested them to do so. This proposer, who happens to be the second, um, um, well, at this point, that's, the first. That's where I'm going to go. Okay. Now, wait. The first response of he there, had volunteered to give us Is there anything to prevent? And I understand the defense of the gentlemen that brought this letter forth, reducing their price, et cetera. But the board can also decide 
to go back to all three proposers and get a best and final, right? No, that would be changing it, the process. It would not. It would have to be a new process. You cannot do that. So one of them tenders say lower price, the other ones don't have the opportunity to con to, to react but to that. But they were the lowest bidder. Although they were above the engineer's estimate, they were still amongst the three that were responsive left. The they were was still the lowest, the lowest bidder, correct. So, so, the point so if we would have followed the, if we would have pro followed the process of accepting the proposal, the original one, they would be the ones that we would have accepted because gotcha. they were the lowest bidder. So they bidder. were a million dollars above this, but they were still the lowest bidder. Yes, sir. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Now, are we ready for a motion? There's been a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Read, read, read the motion, please. Uh, I believe that Ms. Gutierrez's motion was to accept the offer from Miller Electric to reduce the final sum of their bid to, of their price proposal to $8.4 million. Okay, and that was seconded. I'm not sure. I would like a clarification. I mean, who who well, seconded the motion? I haven't heard I'm not sure that that's. Sir Malou seconded. If, if I like clarification on the motion, I thought the motion was, Ms. Gutierrez, if 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 I, I would just want to get a little clarity, Mr. Chair, I thought the motion was to accept the highest ranked qualified proposer, which happens to be Miller. What? But based on their based letter on the and score, everything, the total package, the letter and their score, they were the next bidder in line. Except that, okay. except no? that I believe. Wait, 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 wait. Are you finished? I am. Thank you. All right. Mr. Pagel. Except, if I heard correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, that legal counsel says that we may not be able to do that. No. I, I, I just want clarification. I, Let I me may, have legal counsel. If I may, um, Mr. Him? Chair. No, wait, wait, wait. I have the floor. He's, he's asked a I question clear. from, 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 from Pam, can you clarify or repeat what you said, whether you recommended to this board or not to accept the offer and the letter, or we have to, re have to award to the highest, or the highest ranked proposal, um, qualified responsive, proposal. qualified re proposal. Well, that is really, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chair, originally, there's a difference. Uh, originally, Mr. Pago and I believe Mr. Wartman asked, may you consider this letter? The answer is yes. I raised some concerns about the letter that it did not follow the MDX procurement process and it only provided us with a bottom line dollar figure that we had no way, no backup to determine how compliant this bid might be in terms of a variety of uh, um, unit prices, et cetera. All we've got is a bottom line price. But um, assuming that the bid is acceptable, and, and, or when I say bid proposal, the price proposal is acceptable, um, the motion to reject all bids has been defeated, and now the motion before us is should you go with the number one proposer but at a lower price that they have proposed to you in this letter today. And can you lawfully do that? Yes, I believe you can. Okay, okay. That's the question I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. We have now the legal question. Are there any more, is there any more discussion? Mr. Martinez. I, I just want this board to be clear on what Pan Pandora's box we can be opening here. Absolutely. We had a procurement that, there, that the number one bidder was de deemed to be non-responsive on this project based on not us finding the mistake, but that it, we were informed of it. That was mistake number one. We were given at the operations meeting number one, I did not attend number two, so I'm only going to go as far as number one, that the bid that was given at that time was Benoka. Staff did not inform us, and neither did Miller, who spoke and was present. At operation meeting two, from my understanding, was I was not there. There was no discussion about lowering their bid at that time. And if I, if there was, I apologize because I wasn't there. In the eleventh hour here today is the first time we're doing that. We are opening a Pandora's box that could be that could be that could be used as a precedent for the future. This wasn't one clerical error. This was two that is. And I supported, because I was there, I was very strongly supportive of Miller getting the contract at 
the first operations meeting. I have a very hard time in any way, shape, or form feeling comfortable doing anything other than starting over. And if they want it, and we, we also have to be aware that this is still a million, almost a million dollars more than the bid that was rejected and doesn't count was. Yeah, so there is a theory that there could be even greater savings later if people have a chance to rebid based on what they were observing. Right. That is just, I want to be clear that that's what we would be doing if we, if we now allow them today to provide a letter to change their bid. That is, I believe, Ms. unprecedented. Ms. With my I, I, wanna, I, w I want to uh, address my dear board member, Martinez, that loves to debate and is an attorney. And at the last minute, there are sidebar deals that are done in court because the loser knows that if he doesn't take that deal, they're going to go to jail. So in this case, the beauty of this is no one's going to jail. The only one that has won is MDX with a savings of a million plus with the scope of services intact as bidded. So we saved. If it is a Pandora's box, let the box be open in this case because in this case mean even at the 11th hour, if there is savings to be had for our users, come on, bring it on. We want savings for our users. In this case, it is the bidder's estimate. It is 8.4, and it's a good savings. I, After and I can go with the same argument that we are costing the payers another million because the bidders who would rebid know that the lowest bid in this case that later was rejected was 7.6. So there was a bid that had to be rejected because of two licensing issues. That was the initial person. Okay. Okay. So they didn't know that they were. They didn't Thanks know that the, the situation was a bid until after the bids were open. Ms. Mezzano. I just want to let the record reflect. I would not want to sacrifice our credibility, our transparency, for cost. If it could be reprocured, and maybe we go out and get it even less expensive. All right. Um, anybody else? Because I think we're, we're repeating ourselves now. Go ahead, Mr. Wartman. One question for the executive director. Mr. Okay. Director, there's a question. There's a question. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. If this was rebid, there's been talk about reducing the scope and stuff there, too. Reducing the scope would also possibly reduce the cost. Is that a logical assumption? Yes. Okay. Thank you. But out of fairness, you could also reduce the scope with Mr. Mill with the Miller. Correct. If I, if I may ask a question, because I really need clarification, is the reason is the reason for reducing the scope if we reprocure was because we couldn't afford it or because we don't need it? Schedule. Because the issue of, of schedule and the issue of moving forward with at the time of the first operations committee meeting. The question was asked, why do we have to go to number two, and why are we making that recommendation even if it is $1.6 million over the estimate? And the comment was schedule, because we need the DMS signs in place prior to 836 construction work. Subsequent to that, more information is before us. So when we make a recommendation in operations committee number two, I can't just say, oh, throw everything out and forget everything I told you the first meeting. So to throw everything out and start again, I have to change the schedule. I may have to change scope elements to be able to meet the same timelines that we committed to to our users and our drivers to provide the DMS rights. One more question. Hi, I, I, Mr. Warman, but I think we need okay, to really bring this to a follow-up on that. If and there's more to pay him. Okay, if we did accept, uh, you know, uh, Miller's bid, a proposal, whatever this letter is, you know, along with everything else, and the scope was re reduced a little bit, whatever it is, uh, you know, reduced a percentage, would uh, we be able or would they be able to reduce the price accordingly? I, I think that would fall under the category of negotiation, and that is not how this project was pro procured. And we, is there a motion? What they have proposed is 8.4 million to scope the as well as put out on the after, street. After, after the discussion is over, we'll repeat the motion. Go ahead. Anything else, Mr. Torb? That was it. That was the question. All right. Is there any further discussion? I'm going to read the motion again. If right? you can read it yeah, without gonna, closing okay. discussion, please. Yeah. The motion is 
The maker of the motion is Maritza. Why don't you restate your motion so that we don't have And we any. move to accept the $8.4 million price bid on this RFP. From Miller. From Miller, who is the second responsive qualified in compliance uh, respondent. And that was seconded. That was seconded by and Mr. First, Malou. Actually first. Uh, now, is there further discussion on this motion? I just want to announce that I will be voting against it. Now, from the case of the of what my colleague has said, which is very eloquent, but from the matter of principle, as presented by my other colleague, uh, Mr. Martinez. So, based on principle, I'm announcing that I'll be voting no when it's called. Hey, uh, before before I, we conclude this matter, Mr. Manager, uh, Mr. Director, one one more time uh, on the record. Since there's been a lot of discussion and there have been a lot of mistakes made uh, in this whole process, uh, what is your position? Right. My position is that we begin this procurement all over again. We expedite it. That is the position of the staff, okay. as is was contained in your in your uh, package. Further discussion. All right. Uh, call the roll, please. Ms. Gutierrez. Yes. Mr. Maloof. Yes. Mr. Martinez. No. Mr. Pago. Yes. Mr. Sanabria? No. Mr. Wartman? No. Ms. Fano? No. Chair Ferre? No. So, what's the, so the motion fails by what? Five to three? Oh, Mr. Three to four. Three to four. Okay. Oh, Mr. I'm sorry, Chairman. it was three to five, I believe. Three to five. 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 Would you like the Chairman? With anxiety. Mr. Chairman. I recognize you, Mr. Zanotti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In deference to the Executive Director's recommendations and to avoid principles that could be a problem in the future, as my colleague, Mr. Martinez, has stated, I'd like to make a motion that approval of the Operations Committee recommendation to reject all the proposals for this project. That's already passed. You, you didn't make that motion? That's already passed. Um, did you get a second? I'm sorry. That failed. Uh, Mr. Martinez, would you like to make the motion since you did originally? I'll second it. Well, wait, 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 wait. Legally, under Robert's rules, can we do that? I, I, sure. I'm sorry. I, there would have to be a motion talking, on I'm not sure part. I heard what the motion was. It's, it's, it's a repetition of the third motion in the – which has already failed. In other words, the last time it failed four to four. Now, the question – the question – he is making that motion over again. Yes, you can. You can. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I accept your motion, which is the approval of the operating committee's recommendation to reject all proposed proposals received for the project. That's the motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been seconded. Is there further discussion? All right. Call the roll again. Ms. Gutierrez. No. Yes. Mr. Martinez. Yes. Mr. Pago. I'm going to have to go with yes this time. Mr. Sanabria. Yes. Mr. Wartman. Yes. Ms. Bono. Yes. Yes. Now I'll accept the motion that we re re expedite, rebid this matter, this, I mean, this issue expedited. in an expedited matter. Is there a motion? I'll make that. Mr. Warman makes the motion. Is there a May I ask the uh, uh, Executive Director Rodriguez, what timeline are you going Package to? Package will be presented at the October 9th uh, Operations Committee. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? Second. It's been seconded. Is there further discussion on this motion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So it passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Is there anything else to come up before us? Sir. I'd like to add... Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, on, on two items totally unrelated to what we just discussed, but I think it's important. There's a, a document before us that, that we all received that I think is very relevant and important, and I'd like to ask our uh, the board members to look at page 8, and I think it's a very timely and important that we ask our CEO and her team to come back with an action plan and a timeline where the recurring significant accounting reporting issues are dealt with. So 
they don't continue to be reoccurring significant accounting issues. A remedy for the problem. Mm. Council, you don't You're, understand. I, what I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I, could, Ms. Uh, Ms. Leslie, the top of page eight, recurring significant accounting or reporting oh, I issues. I think what Ms. Uh, Gutierrez is talking about is the reporting issues. It's, this is not an issue of accounting. This was more of a uh, of compliance with our own policies and procedures. Okay. There will be also a report that will be included in all of the packages of the authority, and it is an exp expiration contract expiration report that all of us get. You will get it as well. So you could see when things will be expiring, and there's a right. time. That was that a goes separate forward. request, um, Executive Director Javier. That oh. was a separate request to get a matrix with a listing of all contract consultants and anyone under the roof that has a job with us on beginning and end date and any uh, extensions or renewals so we don't get to exercise the situation that we need to extend when the contract has already expired because that is wrong. This is a separate request so that's over and above in addition regarding this particular audit report that is being given to us and I'm only exercising the spirit as recommended by council that we offer okay as policies hey I need a report that gives me a remedy gives all of us the remedy of something that seems to be a reoccurring situation with internal controls over cash disbursements and receipt, even if it means that you have an issue with $5, payroll processing, internal control over grant revenues and expenditures, even if it means you have zero grants, which may be the case, compliance with contracts, laws, regulation, and grant agreements. I'm reading off of page 8 from Correct. something that's been given What this us. document is, this document is from more Steve Lovelace. There are external auditors. And what this document is, is their audit planning of all the audit procedures that they are going to perform. This is not a report as to results of any audit whatsoever, which hasn't been undertaken at this point in time. This is just communication to the board as to what procedures and items they will be looking at, not that there's any significant issues whatsoever. Okay. When they address in number eight the recurring issues and page eight the recurring issues, if when they use the word recurring, it means is a pre-existing condition something that has no, occurred. No, this is a standard audit planning report. Okay. They have come before this board, you know, the previous auditors as well as the current auditors, and they presented their findings year over year. I believe last year's findings really related to we had some system issues, but there were no findings as far as accounting irregularities or any material events regarding our financial position. That's good. I'm so happy that now the record has been clarified. Thank Quite you welcome. very much for doing so. But, but Ms. Gutierrez, I think I hear your point. But regardless the point that of I'm this audit, is regardless of this exact. audit, I will come back to this board with a plan on remedying so that this issue doesn't occur again. Exactly. That's cool. Any other, anything else to come up before the board? Mr. Chair. Motion yes. to adjourn. No, no, well, hold, hold on, because oh, we have announcements. No, just one little thing. We do not have a budget meeting yeah, planned that's for I was, next month. We will be working with the uh, treasurer to schedule that. Thank yes. you. We have the, announcement, the announcements of the MDX ORT workshops um, on um, October the 2nd at 3 p.m. is very important. The operations committee meeting is on, on the 9th at 9.30 a.m. And the board of directors presently is at the end of October on the 30th, and that may be changed. That's uh, Halloween night, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. No, 30th. I know Lewis, he's got to dress up, so he's not. Well, he's got kids. He's thing one, my wife's going to be thing two. All right, so, so the, the, the point of all this is that uh, we, we're probably going to have two more board meetings between now and the end of the year. One will be in either the end of October or the beginning of November, and the other one will be in December, right? Correct. And we, and we will be – the reason uh, why we're trying to be a little bit flexible is because I want to make sure that we have a full board, uh, because today we had eight. That means that five members were absent. I don't recall a meeting um, in a long, long time where five members were absent. So let's see if we can get the more participation. 
Is there anything else to come yeah, before just the Mr. Chair, I, just, I forgot to mention on the travel, um, I am going to be at the American Public Transportation Association, also known as APTA meeting, uh, over the weekend and through Monday. Um, speaking to the association, I'm on a panel in several workshops, and I wanted to include that in our travel. Uh, and I will, subsequent to that meeting, on the next board meeting, I will make a report on what occurred at that meeting to the members. I think we need a motion to that effect. Okay. Um, huh? well, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the American... Captain. You have the Florida Public Transportation Association. This is the American. This is the National Public Transportation Where is that, Mr. Malouf? It's in Seattle. In Seattle. And uh, also on the 16th of uh, flying October, coach. Uh, there's the Florida Transportation Commission and Team Florida meeting same day, and I'm going to be there. I think, Javier, you're going to be there, and it's just a one-day thing. That's in Orlando. That's why it wasn't on. Ms. Leslie, how do we go about doing this? Um, you can uh, reopen the um, item consent, and amend consent. that for um, the consent agenda if to you include, want to approve. To include those two trips. Um, yes, you had. In, I believe you had included Mr. Uh, we, we need a motion to that effect there. because we can't do that uh, Openly like that. I'll make a motion to reopen the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Now, with, with regards to the these two additions, we need a motion for that. I'll make that motion. And the motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. And it's been seconded. Is there further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? It's a, pass. I'm voting no. I'm sorry. I'm voting no. Because we cannot start this like this. If this would have been during the course of the actual meeting, I think it would have been fine. And although I think it's not a problem, it's your own planned conference that you're attending. I think this is incorrect. Okay. This is absolutely incorrect. You see, the problem is that that really should have been part of the discussion. If exactly. you had an objection, and I so apologize. It is, it's funny how, you know, for some things we want to be I don't, so have, listen, transparent. I'll withdraw it. Listen, I don't, for, oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't, I'll withdraw it. It's not a big deal. It, it is a really big isn't. deal. It is a big deal. All right. So I, I, th I think it is important that we have a procedurally that this is correct. So um, I'm just going to withdraw the whole request. It doesn't even matter. I mean, does that solve it, Ms. Leslie? Um, well, your, I believe your travel is before the next yes. meeting, and so we still have. Um, he just withdrawn Mr. His, his request. Mr. Maloof did. It. Mr. Wartman had added his travel. That has been withdrawn, so that's not an issue anymore. But, but we are okay. covering Mr. Wartman for his travels, um, and it's. We, we can put that on the next vote. agenda and just approve it we'll after. We'll put it on the next agenda. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, so the chair rules that that previous motion will be continued for the next agenda. Is that is that appropriate? All right. Is there anything else? All right. We stand. We stand adjourned. Wow.